This episode of the Rooster Teeth Podcast is brought to you by ProFlowers.com. Get 100 blooms of love for just $19.99. Add gourmet chocolates or a teddy bear for just $9.99 more. Just click the microphone and use code TEETH at ProFlowers.com. Click the microphone and use code TEETH at ProFlowers.com. This episode of the Rooster Teeth Podcast is brought to you by Sherry's Berries. Send giant dip strawberries from Sherry's Berries starting at only $19.99. Over 40% savings or double the berries for just $10 more. Just click the microphone and use code TEETH when you order at Berries.com. Hey, 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 hey. Welcome a to a so. super packed, super confusing podcast. Do you think Gus? This week, nobody can hear you. With Gus, <laughs> Miles, Carrie, hey. Gavin, hello, Barbara, Jack, Aloha, and Gus. Hey, yeah. and Gus's left testicle. So you and, got, and my left testicle. Yeah. So you guys are only be with us for a little while. Otherwise, yeah. this would yeah. be an absolutely ridiculous uh, absolutely podcast. Fun. Just saying, with yeah. six people, we, we don't have. Drag enough. this out as long as possible. Our yeah, microphones absolutely. aren't rated for this. You're not yeah, rated for this. I'm well, not rated. Turn them up to eleven. Yeah, just Ooh. turn these two. Yeah, let's so, right spinal tap. Um, I was talking up today. Shut up. Uh, the the first time was There's too many people. That's what happens. You put six yeah, people. We'll have I'm, our conversation. I'm going to move on here. <sighs> okay. So Just I was talking with moves. with Miles and Kerry the other day, and I've been wanting to have them on the podcast for a long time because they had a they had I was going to say a funny story. They had a weird story <laughs> well, happen to them while they well, were traveling recently, mm-hmm. uh, and they both have been too tied up with uh, Ruby and Red versus Blue stuff. Uh, to come on and spend the whole podcast, so I convinced them to come out for a little while mm-hmm. and uh, and tell their story. This was going to be the green screen, but uh, somebody, you know, but Kyle somebody looked it up and Kyle didn't set up the green screen yeah, in time. The great somebody, Poor guy. <laughs> somebody, <laughs> yeah. some an intern corral, and they're just standing there, just so chewing hay. I've been flying for a long time. It's one of the things I always talk about, like all right. the weird things happening when I fly. You, However, uh, that being said. I've never had happen to me what happened to you. Can I just say real quick, when I fly, Talking I strive to, to be you. <laughs> I'm serious. It's like everything I do when I fly is like, how would Gus feel about well, that? Will no, he be angry when he's no flying? No check bag. Me? Yeah, no check bags. I keep everything in my pocket. Do you wake everything. yourself up while snoring? Because that's a very I've done that. We, yeah. we, uh, we had to bring suits with us. This was this was uh, on our trip to the IW. I can't do this anymore. Okay, <laughs> this was, this was on our way to the IW TV Awards. And yeah. just, just having the suit bag completely threw off your groove. Like, I, you, you I, know... I, I had a problem. I had, I had a serious, almost a nervous breakdown because I had a suit bag. You were like, you're like, Miles, can you carry this on the first time? I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know what to do. I was like, oh, you can just tell them if, if you can hang it. There's typically like some space near the front. There wasn't. And you asked and they said no. And you looked at me like I had just betrayed yeah. you. Well, like, <laughs> you were on Southwest. <laughs> yeah. Normally the closet is in the first class cabin. Southwest does not have first class, so there's no closet. There you go. Everybody's um, communist. Southwest. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, this so y'all were flying to the IWTV we're, Awards. Exactly. Flying so we're to flying to Las Vegas. August, uh, Austin, Las Vegas. Uh, th- I started this asleep, so you okay, might need to start right. this. I was asleep with my hood. I was playing like such. I I was uh, I was in the zone. I was listening to some Star Bomb, playing some Zelda, and then uh, I I noticed that there was a whole lot of people rushing past me in the aisle. Right. And um, to the aisle across from me. Yeah, yeah. So so I was. Uh, Let's say I'm in row one, right? Carrie is directly behind me in row two, and then Bernie is right across from me in row one A, whatever the fuck. In row two A, <laughs> shut the fuck up. Um, I, I I take my headphones out. I'm like, what's going on? And I look I look over my shoulder, and there's just a crowd of people uh, near the aisle, directly across and behind me. Right. And the the stewardess is there, and everybody looks kind of Flight freaked attendant. out. Flight attendant is Flight that attendant. whatever the the <laughs> flying the lady person. Um, uh, the PC correct. They, she she opens up the floor and pulls out this black box telephone looking thing. Which I've thing. never seen them do before. Uh, yeah, yeah. I didn't know that was there. And and she started using the phrase "We need to call dispatch," and yeah. I, that I only hear in television. So I knew some yeah. shit was going down. This was it, somewhere I, I was dreaming at that point. It's somewhere in, in like the fugue state that I was in. I heard the uh, fugue state. <laughs> okay, okay, Heisenberg. <laughs> uh, I heard. Uh, nice reference, Gus. Yeah, I heard. Uh, they, they, they said I've never I didn't actually know they said this they said if anybody is a uh, what did they say it was is uh, it was a medical medical personnel on, yeah. on, on the flight please uh, like push the call to going. Them. and I was so and so, I was like okay yeah what is this um so a, a nurse came over yeah and I all I can see is a crowd of people and then a, a hand just not moving just sitting on a knee just kind of just limp. Like that, and that was yeah. Carrie, and yes. uh, <laughs> and uh, and then people crowded like, around him, and I'm jerking it and I'm uh, I'm getting a little uneasy, but the nurse gets in there, and uh, they're they're feeding this guy oxygen, yeah, and that's when I hear the phrase <laughs> feeding it, yeah, yum, 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 just yum, yum, yum. <laughs> just spooning yeah, it in. Delicious. Here comes the plane. Everybody else had the turkey. Oh, shut up. <laughs> Good job, <laughs> thank Miles. you, Barbara. Um, bump from across yeah, the couch. But um, that's when I heard the phrase. Oh God, uh, he has no pulse. He has no pulse. The He's nurse no- said, oh God. 
Yeah. Wow. Nice. It was. Uh, it was, was a little. It was. It was and, a little tense. And this is about the point I woke up, and they kept repeating the phrase: "He has no pulse. He has no blood pressure." Um, I didn't know. I don't know what that means. So, so I'm a doctor. The the male <laughs> flight attendant turns to the female flight attendant and politely asks her to tell dispatch that we need to land the fucking plane right now. Yeah. We, there's this dude is dead. Yeah. And almost as if on cue, like after after he says that, all of a sudden everybody nearby suddenly just looks. Yeah. And I hear them go from being like hush 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 to hey hey buddy whoa. You, how you feeling? The guy, the guy, literally, he was standing there and he just went <gasps> and like sat up. It was like, just like awake. And he, he, he just woke up from a nap or something. Yeah. And he and uh, <laughs> Bernie, Bernie was sitting right in front of him. Yeah. And he told me that apparently the guy was just gray as stone, just no color in his face. And then not he like was a, up, not like a brown stone, but like a gray stone. Like a gray stone, <laughs> gray as a gray stone. Okay. And like uh, <laughs> and uh, and then he was just kind of back, and and everyone's like, "Are you okay? Yeah, you were you were gone there for a bit. Uh, do you have a condition?" And the guy says. I mean, sometimes low electrolytes, but uh, yeah. no, not really. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I'm, sure. I'm, I'm prone to random death. Yeah. Yeah. Get this no kind of Gatorade, deal. some G2. Yeah. Sometimes all my blood pressure disappears <laughs> and my yeah. pulse starts. But, um, that was when he was like, man, everybody should drink Gatorade. But everybody, no, everyone kept that. was like, are you okay? He goes, yeah, no, I feel fine. So they just decided, okay, I guess we're still going to Vegas. Yeah. Everybody get back to their seats. Everything, Everything's cool. And uh, the two people that were in his aisle get back to their seat. And it was this very awkward few seconds of... <laughs> What the fuck was that? You died? Yeah. <laughs> like, they try, like they're like, do we say anything? Do we address what just happened? And then they just go, they're like, what the fuck was that? Yeah. It's like, yeah, no, I know, I know, that shit happened. That like when he got off the plane, he just like walked off and left. So like, that's my everybody? thing. We, we landed. I assumed that they were gonna rush him off. Uh, nothing. Did you just no, got off? <laughs> he he waited like the rest of us. There was nobody at the end to meet him to check on him if he was okay. He just walked off like nothing fucking happened. And apparently he he. He wasn't meeting anybody there. No. He wasn't going with anybody. He was just a lone dude going to Vegas. And oh, and here's the weird thing: the dude was maybe yeah, here's 30. the weird thing. <laughs> I, thought, yeah, yeah. I thought, I thought for sure, I thought for sure when when the crowd dispersed, I'd see some old geezer or something. No, the dude was maybe thirty. Yeah, wow. looked like a completely normal guy. Just died, Except then the, woke the up. And, yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, wait, what caused people to start being suspicious? Because I've seen people asleep on planes, and I wouldn't think that they were. Oh, dead. Here's what happened. Oh god. Yeah. Um. So uh, according to Bernie. Yeah. Uh. He heard from the people behind him. They were all talking to him. Having, they were all having a conversation, the three of them. And then the the guy that croaked just starts talking, <laughs> and he all Half of a sudden croaked. he 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 couldn't. It looked like he couldn't get out what he was trying to say. Like he really wanted to say something, but he just couldn't. And then his eyes rolled in the back of the head, and he just yeah, he died. I think, I think and yeah, then he died, and then he, he died. died. Yeah, yeah. yeah, literally. Um. So <laughs> so did yeah. they have to log that, Gus? Like did like the flight attendants have to write that stuff down and actually be like, like no, because he got off the plane under his own power. Yeah. Really? No, I don't know. I'm fucking making it up. <laughs> <laughs> you, I, mean, you I did believe it though. Here's <laughs> here's the question: Does that guy then have the best luck going into Vegas or the worst? No, luck? no. You you've yeah. used up all yeah, your luck, or did you use up everyone else's? He used our luck. Yeah. He went all in. And he won. It's like that's it. You fucking walk away. We didn't away. use our luck. We made we made one bet while yeah, we were in true. Las Vegas because yeah. we we're lame and just yeah. went to one went to dinner and then went to bed. Uh, but we walked through a casino. You do in Vegas. A, yeah. yeah, of course. Yeah, it went I to bed in our room with record. the window connected to the bathroom. It was pretty great. But um, no, we made one bet. It was just like twenty on red. Red wins. Thank you very much, Las Vegas. Away, yeah. <laughs> I was just done. So you came nice. out on top. You, you won, top. You won Vegas. A hundred percent increase in your money. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Yeah, that's a success. Yeah. There you go. There was money he owed me too, so it double. double. Wow. It was like two hundred percent, really. Even better. Yeah, it's yeah. like undefined. Yeah, pretty much. It's like your calculator has a little e on it, <laughs> and then you turn it upside down, and you're right eight zero zero eight five. Yeah, boo. That guy boo. might actually have had the the right idea there because flying is boring, and I bet that flight was really fast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Really you quick. Midway through your flight. Like, do, imagine napping. Imagine dying. Do you think that? that death was like a precursor and that he died in his sleep in his hotel room that night. Uh, like, you know, they I say like, hope. you have a stroke yeah. and then chances hope. are you die again. That's why I thought somebody would be there to check on him because yeah. it's like, sure, clearly he's not okay. Yeah. You know? It was like, that was your fake death. Your real one's coming in two hours. What, yeah. Do you think he was afraid to get on the plane going back? Like, oh shit, this is gonna happen what, again? What kind of food? drink the Gatorade? Maybe he like checks that box when he's buying the plane ticket. Are you prone to sudden death? Yes. yes. <laughs> I think what happened was he'd been dying all week and he just decided to take all of his money to Vegas to try and make the most yeah. of it. Yeah, let's leave Vegas, right? This Nick Nicolas yeah. Cage movie, right? Yeah. He's tra he tries to kill himself in Vegas. <laughs> Are we all dying game. all the time? Every couple hours, he's like, oh, oh, not today. Not today, Lord. I gotta get to Vegas. What, what? do we tell death? Not today. Not today. All right, get out of here. Well, wait, wait, wait. Just one thing what? to think about. One thing uh, to think no. about. What? What's creepy is normally when I get on a plane, I don't really feel like talking to anybody. I just kind of put in my headphones and, and that's that. If this guy hadn't been talking to anybody, if he had just fallen asleep, yeah. do you think he would have died? 
No, because no, nobody he didn't do Yeah, no one did anything. He didn't do shit. He would have died, woken they, up, they, and nobody would have known. Yeah. It's not even you, him. Can you imagine if you died on a plane and didn't know? <laughs> like, you fell asleep, died, and then came back to life. <laughs> you're like, like, you're like, night. Yeah, I'm really, I'm really sore. Yeah, <laughs> you just wake up feeling, ex. you just yeah, feel really <laughs> groggy for some really reason. Icy. What's going on? Bad circulation. Would you be scared if you were if you were told that you had died in your life? Yeah, <laughs> I would have freaked the fuck out. Wait, you mean like I would I would have said land the fucking plane, <laughs> or like if you find like like you died at like the end, and it's like oh yeah, this is like the third time you've died. It's like what the fuck? How did that happen? You, you go to heaven, and it looks really familiar. It's like have I seen this place? Before? <laughs> it's, it's like oh, man. Gus is back. Is this JC Penney? <laughs> All right, get out. out. Failing. Thanks for joining Bye. us. Bye. Yeah, Bye. Bye guys. Have fun with your rubies have and your fun. red versus blue is. Ah, you will electrocute me. That's a very weird. Miles trip. is statically charged. Oh. Wow, Close. that's a that's a hell of an exit. <laughs> um, so Good I night. had a problem earlier today in the office. I yeah. want to talk about it. Pray Let's tell. talk about it. So we have way too many employees and not nearly enough bathrooms. That is correct. We have three bathrooms. It's very common that you go to go to the bathroom and you have to wait because yes. the bathrooms are in use. And uh, so today I had to go to the bathroom really bad. Had to drop a deuce. And, uh, Which that limits you to two bathrooms. Right, so I can't, I can't go upstairs. So I yeah, have to use no, two, no two in the two. No, no twosies up there. It's just, just the number one. So I go downstairs and both doors are closed. Some people, JJ, close the doors after they use the bathroom. So you have to check them. That's the worst. I checked both of them and they were locked. I was like, okay, there's people in there. So I sit down at the kitchen table and I start like checking Twitter and stuff. And I realize I can hear a 3DS in one of the <laughs> bathrooms. I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to be here a while. So then uh, eventually, like, the other bathroom opens up. The person comes out. Uh, and I'm like, no, I'm going to sit here. I'm going to wait knew it. <laughs> and see who's in there playing 3D. That's how you made a tweet about it. <laughs> um, you should show the follow-up tweet made by yours truly. So then, um, yeah, Barbara called it a 3 deuce s. <laughs> 3 deuce s. <laughs> so uh, I'm waiting. Ten minutes, nothing. Jesus. And then, like, 15 minutes, nothing. I'm like. Damn. Are they what, dead? What's going on? Yeah. They died on the toilet. And then, so then Jordan comes by and I tell Jordan about it. And uh, we're like, who, who could be in there? Why didn't you just street pass it? <laughs> yeah. I didn't have my 3DS. Uh. So then, uh, after like 30 minutes, the person's still in there. We're like, are they okay? Is something wrong, maybe? Because we don't hear the 3DS anymore at this point. You waited 30 minutes just to find out who was using their 3DS in the bathroom. This was very important <laughs> for work. Well, actually, a- what I started doing was I didn't want to wait there anymore, so I just pulled up security camera on my phone and I had it at my desk so I could see when the door opened. <laughs> um, and then, so after like 30 minutes, Jordan and I were like, well, the door hasn't opened, but maybe the person left it we didn't see. So uh, I told Jordan, go up and jiggle the handle. And Jordan's like, no, you go. And I'm like, no, you go. So then Jordan, so eventually I convinced him to do it. He walks up to the handle and like, Kind of slightly turns it, except it makes a really loud noise. So we both run away because we both get scared. <laughs> Are you pigeons? Uh, so then finally, after 45 minutes, after 45 minutes, the door finally opens. Ashley was putting her makeup on to, uh, to film news. Uh, so it, was like, it was like all this build up, like who's it going to be? Uh, What's going to happen? And it was like, oh, well, it's a totally logical And she's using a 3DS while doing it. She probably, when she first got it, she might have still been using it and then like closed it and put it down because I only heard it at the beginning. Uh, okay. uh, so it's like, oh, I'll let build up. So you're saying a, we need a makeup not, mirror. For nothing. We do. We need a makeup mirror for the office. We actually had a spot carved out for like a makeup area when we initially uh, designed the old office. Or the, yep. the, I guess. The current office? The current office, which was will it? now be the old office. It was it was in the studio by the um, the paint closet, like the, that workshop little washroom area. I didn't realize that was or there wash until area. like the sink. a year after I worked here. I had no yep. idea that room was there. It's creepy. Little secret room back there. It's like where all the paint and stuff is. I always do my makeup in the bathroom with the door open so that if someone comes by and they need to use the bathroom, I just like get out. Because I don't want someone to think that yeah. I'm like doing something in there that... You guys thought someone was doing <laughs> yeah. in there. So you you were one of the the first female employees we had here who worked here full time. Yeah. And you exposed a critical flaw in our electrical system. The first like week that I worked here, I think. That's what was what it a hair dryer or something? Yeah. She did something none of us had ever done. She plugged a hair dryer in, in the bathroom. <laughs> and as soon as she turned it on, we realized that all of the servers that run the office are on that same circuit. <laughs> so when she turned on the hair dryer, everything in the office just shut down. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, I guess that's a problem. Yeah. <laughs> These people use those things, huh? Remember when we set off the fire alarm and we couldn't find the switch to turn it off? Oh god. I think I think Nathan was filming like he was filming the DVD menus for um for the, the one of the shorts DVDs. And I think it was the button or something. And so he smoked up the the kitchen 
and then we set off the smoke alarm and it just started going. Turns out the the like the reset for the smoke alarm was upstairs in that that like the doors that don't have any entrance or whatever. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They were up there, so we had to get a ladder up there. Those were locked. There were locks <laughs> <laughs> with the key. And so we had to unlock that and someone finally found the keys for that, unlocked it, got inside, and then found the button to reset it. And up was the alarm there. going off the entire time? Yeah, it was going off. And so it, was, it was going off for like an hour, right? Yeah, it, it was like it was. And those piercing. things are usually like yeah. ear hurtingly loud. Louder than the actual like security alarm. It's because on par. that thing is motherfucking I, It might be loud. the same alarm. I yeah. can hear that from my apartment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that thing is loud. The, the, uh, <laughs> there used to be a speaker in right behind your desk, like where the TV is. Oh, God. In that air vent. There used to be one in there. And the first time it ever went off, I was in that office. <laughs> I thought I was dead. <laughs> was like, <laughs> I thought Holy I was going to fall over. It was so fucking loud. You wake loud. up on a plane to Vegas. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever set off like a motion detector for an alarm? I've set like off in our building or at like a house motion detectors, but the alarm doesn't. Go I've been off. In, I've been in the building when the alarm went off. Before. I, I set off the alarm at the downtown office before. Yeah, yeah. It's I, a I was there for that thing. once. It scars you for life. <laughs> like now, whenever I think I might be the last one at the office, I like slowly creep out of the tech office, like and like wave my <laughs> hand just in case. <laughs> it's like sneakers; you move real slow yeah. and you can't yeah. see what, you. What, what's waving your hand going to do? Just like so, I'm prepared that I might set off. The, I don't. There's know. a motion sensor. You don't, want to, you don't want to set it off with your body. You have to set. I don't know. Head. I just want to like. <laughs> You're gonna set it off if you do that. I know. I just want to test it. I don't know. Well, apparently cats don't set off motion sensors, do they? Yeah, yeah they, they, they will. Here. They will. Yeah, all the time. Ah. Remember the first time we had our alarm go off was a rat. I think it was a rat or a mouse set yeah. it off. Oh, that's a sensitive yeah. sensor. That was fun. You hear that, thieves? Don't even think about it. A mouse <laughs> couldn't get away. What happened to that mouse? It's dead. <laughs> <laughs> it flew to Vegas. <laughs> Didn't uh, get resuscitated. Yeah. yeah, no one cares if a fucking mouse dies. Now we can have um, speak, oh. speak. except for the mouse in the other room. I Sorry, care about Mildred. Mildred. Our little office what? mouse. What is everyone? To, what is, do we have a mouse? We have a mouse now. Why do we have they a, got mouse? a mouse? Remember when we were trying to kill the mice in the office? Now we got one. Well, that, those are rats. This is a little cute, like field mouse. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Seen it? They were they um they were doing some filming and they needed a mouse. Why? The Australia video. They had a bit where they had veggie mice sandwich instead of veggie mite or veggie mite. And we bought a real mouse for that. Yeah, at a pet store, like a tiny little mouse. And now it's just. And now this is the next two to three years of our life. Is that the. So I was um, was at home and I've told people about my place. It's pretty small. It's basically just one room. And my connect is in the back, is in the wall. It's looking in. Basically, my connect can see my entire place. And uh, Dan was at my house recently. He was playing games. And I was just walking around the room. And uh, and then Dan left for some reason. And the connect will sign you in if it sees your face, right? So I was walking around the room for ages and nothing happened. And then I decided to get dressed. And I took all my kit off. And as soon as I pulled my boxes down, the connect went, hi, Gavin. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. So I'm wondering if it thinks that my dick was my face or something. Like, like your dick do- is the equivalent of your nose kind of thing? Like the lens? Yeah. And I'm, try- I'm, I'm trying to figure out now. If I, if I go on the connect to see what the connect can see and just pull out my penis, will it put my name by I don't want to be that guy, but is your, is your like... Your pubic hair look like your normal hair, <laughs> like you part it. <laughs> like you have a nice little comb over it. <laughs> you know, you put some gel in it. Yeah, like, just spike it up spike a little bit. Up. You can get pretty poofy down there. I All saw right. someone post on Reddit today that they shaved their beard and their connect wouldn't recognize them. Yeah, yeah. that's unfortunate. <laughs> so you should try that. No, yeah, that's that's gonna be the reason why I shave my beard. <laughs> Give like that me. a shot. I think people would mutiny if I shaved my beard at this point. I trimmed no, it. I, no, I trimmed it down. No, no, no one would mutiny. You can keep telling Dude, yourself I have, a, that. I have a shirt with my face on it. Like that's. I you have, have a shirt with your now. face on it. It's got my beard on it. The, the beard shirt. It's true. Once you're in there, you're so, locked for life. I have, I, have, I have a fucking shirt with me as Che Guevara. Yeah. What? So? Yeah. Yeah. I'm not. I don't dress as Che Guevara anymore. 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 <laughs> <laughs> that that's one my shirt past. where you kind of look like him. Yeah, that one shirt where he has a beard. Don't fucking turn this around on me. I'm just saying, I could see where Jack's coming from. No, so, it's, no. no, it's my thing. It's like I, that's I have my a shirt where I'm dressed as a superhero. I'm not. I don't look like a superhero. Well, you don't dress like that every day. I always have this beard on. <laughs> and I was like, I'm like, mm, is today a beard day? Yeah, I think it's a you clip it on. <laughs> I think it seems like on Twitter, everyone's very happy with the flack that flying to Vegas is now a euphemism for death. <laughs> <laughs> what happened to your grandpa? I flew to Vegas. Yeah, we, we put him on a flight to Vegas. Or someone so wrote, hey, Tony, what happened to Joey? We put him on a flight to Vegas. If you catch my meaning. <laughs> what That's Jay like Bolton. killing like, him. Like your kids come, Mom, what happened to Mittens? Oh, Mittens went to Vegas. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Mittens She's in a better place. <laughs> uh, Man. Yeah, but I, I got my beard trimmed. That was exciting. I went, I went to Birds and got it done. That was nice. What, but was then, that exciting? Oh, yeah, it was fun. Do they I, charge? Like, is that a service you can get? Or is fi- it just, yeah, it's five bucks to get your beard trimmed up. 
And so I, and I, I let professionals do it now because I don't know what the hell I'm doing. I have like all the, the beard trimmer and the scissors and everything, but I know when, like, whenever I trim my beard, I always end up being like crooked. It's like one size longer. Yeah, but so nobody's like I'm paying permanently that sway. No, but now that he face. says it, it's, no, it, it's, it's super cleaned up yeah, and symmetrical yeah, and tight. I, I can totally see it. Shut up, Barbara. Bless you. But uh, the thing was, I went, so I went to get my hair cut as well. And I told the woman I usually pull my hair back. And so she did that and then she cut the sides. And then she never cut the front again. So my hair is like still super long. <laughs> and I'm like, I got my hair cut. It's like still like in my face. I'm like, nothing will ever be as bad it. as right. Ray's haircut from so, a couple months ago. Which one? Ray's haircut. Ray's the one he looked like a thumb. He fell asleep getting his haircut. I don't, I think he just got a bad haircut and that's his excuse. I, I, what's worse? Do you think he wanted to try it? Like, he's like, maybe this will look good on <laughs> Maybe he's like, give me some like hip new This will be my haircut. thing. That and sounds just, like Ray. Yeah. Right? Yeah. No, it doesn't. Gavin, your hair is getting pretty <laughs> you long. Fell asleep. My hair's getting pretty long. I had yeah. it cut recently. Really? Is it long? Is it no. too long? No. Yeah, it looks pretty big. Gavin just has a lot of <laughs> you hair. Look like, you look like David Lee Roth right now a little bit. I'll take do, it. Do you know who David Lee Roth is? Yeah. Okay. Who is he? He uh, he lives his life like there's no tomorrow. There you go. All right. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> there's that soundboard of... Uh, God damn it, baby. <laughs> yeah, of, uh, of him singing... Uh, Ed, Ed showed us that. Yeah. He was playing that, well, the whole time we were filming Cat Dynam Dynamic. We just heard it's, uh, lines from Running With The Devil. With no music. It's yeah. just the vocals. Yeah, it's funny. really, really Howard Stern weird. plays it a lot, or he used to a lot. Mm. Um, we got an Awu intro today from uh, a Bare Naked Ladies concert, actually. Oh, we did? It was a guy who did an intro, and it was they were playing... Um, what city was it? Uh, somewhere in Canada. <laughs> so, no, I don't know. It's funny. We had like two or three Canadian Seriously. intros. We've been getting a lot of Australian intros lately on Awu. We have a lot of Australian fans. Yeah, but yeah. I, I don't know if like the, the like the Australians all got together. Like, now is our time to get in and upload I think a ton of intros. The country's on fire. It's like, before yeah. we all fly to Vegas, let's <laughs> make an Awu intro. I Actually, think yeah. per capita, Sydney is like our biggest fan base. Really? Yep. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's I like think Sydney, it's London, actually. Houston, Toronto, London. Yeah, all those, those yeah. four cities are like up there. Man. But uh, so we're coming up with Awu 200 is two weeks from today. And so I'm trying to think of like, we usually do like scavenger, or we used to do scavenger hunt intros. So it'd be like, oh, go find this and then submit the intro. I think what I want to do for 200 is find the biggest name celebrity you can find to say Awu number 200. And then whoever has the biggest name celebrity, I'll send them something. So you're, you're what here, if it's me? You're here, here first. Yeah, I was gonna say you will someone probably find not Gus. Win. I mean, you submitting or you are the celebrity? No, like I can find a celebrity. If you can find a celebrity, go for it. All oh, right. I thought you were referring to yourself. No, no, as God, a celebrity. no, I'm nobody. I'm <laughs> yeah. just some idiot who drinks beer on the internet <laughs> <laughs> with a signed picture of himself behind his desk. <laughs> yeah. I love that picture. <laughs> Every time, every morning, thing. I walk up to my desk, I see the signed autograph picture of me on the wall behind me. I'm like, yeah. So, <laughs> did you do that like with your own thought, or was that after Blaine? Because he did that too by no, his I, desk. No, I forgot about that. What actually happened was. Uh, I, I had that picture on my desk, and John Reisinger came over to ask me some questions about uh, RTX logo design. Yeah. And he saw the picture, and he's like, oh, that's really funny. He said, you should put that in the wall behind you. And I was like, I'm going to autograph this. <laughs> <laughs> what he came over? He sits like six feet from you. Yeah, he rolled over. <laughs> oh, <really? laughs> mm -hmm. We had a little chat at my desk. We're not going to yell at each other across the... So my New Year's resolution from you was to not be so narcissistic. Yeah. And you got signed pictures. I'm taking it from you. <laughs> All right, there you go. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. I guess uh, I, I wanted to go back to something else. Uh, from earlier. Good luck with your celebrity. You got two weeks, guys. So I was talking about bathroom problems here at the Rich Teeth office. Yes. Do most of our male employees not know that there's a urinal? I'm 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 pretty sure most of our male employees do not know there's a urinal in the because office. Because that there's we have one bathroom that has a urinal and a toilet in it, and more than half the time the toilet seat is up on that toilet. Yep. I'm like, believe there me, is, I've noticed. There is a <laughs> urinal you could piss in while pissing into the toilet. Like it's within <laughs> reach. You just have to pivot. It's just around a wall. There's a little wall in the way, though, so maybe some people don't know there is a one there. Like we should put a sign up. Roost Chief employees, there is a urinal in the big bathroom downstairs. Yep. Please use it. Bathroom on the left. If you're male. Go in and go to your left. Go to the shower. And don't pee in the shower. Don't pee in the shower. <laughs> because that's disgusting. No, do. No go one for do it. it. Apparently, that's totally okay. I don't, you're I don't you're all alone here, Barbara. We, we can get it. No, I'm not. Yeah, the on, on this podcast, on you are. The Bernie internet. wasn't. Right now? Do you see Bernie here? In my mind. There you go. You're all alone. <laughs> um, yeah, I, don't, I, 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 I guess I hadn't thought about the fact that maybe people don't know that there's a urinal there. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I, I guess no, I, mean, I we have so, that. We have so many employees now. It's like I imagine people just don't know. It's not, a, it's not part of the orientation. Yeah, but you walk into the bathroom. You check it out. You're like, hey, what's over here? I guess so. It, yeah. it is a big-ass bathroom. Yeah. So. I don't like going in that bathroom. Yeah? I feel intimidated by all the size and all the space. I feel like it's a waste of space oh, if I use it's, it. It's bad to poo in. You think so? It feels like you're pulling in someone's hallway. <laughs> like, like it's so big with like echo and stuff. Yeah, there's like people, there's corners that you can't see around. It's, it's also like, weird because be it's like there. it's right by the table, and like you could conceivably be 
shitting just a couple feet away from like someone's eating. Yeah. yeah. Well, the it's... other one's literally like three feet off away from yeah, that. They're, one. Yeah, but they're it's further away than the other one. one. <laughs> on the other side of a wall. It's further away though. I guess so. Have you guys noticed how cold the bathrooms are all the time? No, we don't no. sense cold as much as you. You're like the well, coldest. The bathrooms the are on the same thermostat as your office. That's why. They're always oh. so cold. The those bathrooms. Your office, the Chima Hunter office, and, and the conference, conference room. room are all together. <laughs> yeah. And the Chima Hunter office has been getting, it's, it's super hot. So it's like, well, because we have, you know, six guys in there all with Xbox One, Xbox 360 computers. Brag about it. And so it gets super, super what else hot we in got? there. And I feel bad for Barbara. I'm but like the <laughs> one person, I'm the one girl who has to suffer through, like, the yeah. actual and You work with the Adams who are both the big dudes who don't get cold. I know. Fucking Adam Ellis will be sweating, and I'm just like... <laughs> I'm so cold. Gus, the other day you were like, "I'm going to the studio." <laughs> yeah. Are you I ready for Snowpocalypse 2014 Part Two? So it's supposed to sleet it, and it, snow tonight. It iced a little bit last Friday, and it the city of Austin shut, the city shut down. down. Dude, yeah, it, I, I will say that's the first time it's iced, and ice remained there all day until the next day. That hasn't happened in a long time. I have something to say about this. Okay. For my entire life, I've lived in Canada. I'm gonna get pissed real quick. All right. <laughs> my entire life I've lived in Canada and I've seen during the winter people in Texas or like the warmer states post about getting a little bit of snow or ice and like oh school's canceled boohoo and I'm just like what the hell like that's it and school's canceled living here and like seeing that the city is not prepared. Thank you, Barbara. It's okay, icy. Okay, I'm not going to be pissed now. dangerous for well, people to also, drive. Th like, well, there's also, I get it. I get it the now. The city is not prepared for yeah, that kind of... they don't of, have well, ice I, I think there's also a unique phenomenon that can occur here that doesn't typically happen in northern states where the temperature can fluctuate so radically. Yeah. You can have a storm move through in rain and then be followed up with freezing temperatures a couple hours later. So it's like you get all that water, lots of water, and then it just freezes solid. It's, yeah. not, it's not like it snowed. Yeah. It literally rained and then froze. It was yeah. ice. So it's like yeah, ice people everywhere. don't have they don't have snow tires. You guys don't have salt trucks. You guys don't have snow plows. Nothing. So it's like I get why people have things shut down here. And, and, and people I guess, don't know how to drive in that weather no, either. So it's like people don't know how to drive in the rain here. Yeah, exactly. I saw, uh, when, people when, don't know how to drive here. When it was uh, <laughs> the other day on Friday, when everything was iced over, I was coming down to work and I saw uh, a truck. Like, I was stopped at a red light in an intersection. I saw a truck drive through the intersection. I was like, why is that truck making a weird noise? Oh, it's got snow tires on. <laughs> he's got chains on his tires. Oh, my God. And he's driving down the street just like... I was like, tearing up the street. Why? <laughs> yeah, there's no point. I'm in a Prius. I'm fine. Yeah. We well, got Jeff's windscreen iced up, and I was like, all right, give me a scraper. I'll go and do it. And he was like, I have a scraper. <laughs> scraper. No, I guess not. Yeah, nobody has yeah. anything. It, we, we usually dip below freezing about twice a year, and then we'll have like a really hard freeze, like where it like actually has ice and stuff on the ground about once every four to five years. So this has actually been a really like very you know lame year for weather for us. And so like this this isn't common for us, which is funny because Katie is her first year to be here in the winter. I'm like this doesn't yeah. happen. Like it's this, the same with Dan because Dan yeah. was just here for filming. He was like, why is it whenever I come, it's freezing cold? <laughs> you said it never gets cold. I was like, yeah, it really doesn't. You just, well, the, yeah. the weird timing. thing was so it froze on Friday. Everything was shut down. It was below freezing all day. Then on Saturday, it was so warm, I walked to the convenience store to buy beer in a t-shirt and shorts. It yeah. was beautiful. It was like 70 yep. degrees. It was amazing outside. I asked someone if Austin is like on menop like during menopause or something. It was just like <laughs> warm one day, cold one day. Hot yeah, flash, and then tonight man. and tomorrow morning it's supposed to sleet and snow again. Yeah, they're saying one to three inches of snow. So I, I, I mean, but the ground—I don't know if the ground is like cold enough still that it'll actually retain some of that. Well, stuff. it's going to sleet first okay, for a couple so hours. Kind of layered, so like, we can have a nice solid layer of ice. Snow can rest on. Yeah, it's just like the annoying state of snow. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing fun about it. Or I heard pretty. a story today. <laughs> I think I saw how it's done. Of some woman in New York who slipped on ice as she came out of her office, and they were it was like they were doing an article about people like coming to help people who slip on ice. And apparently, some dude in his thirties ran up to her and was like, "Oh, are you okay?" And then robbed her and ran off. <laughs> people Jesus are awful. It's like it's such an awful level of humans that I can't relate to in any way. Like that wouldn't even cross my mind. It's like, oh, a vulnerable woman. I'm taking her bag. I would just be like, oh, you're right. But there's people it's like she can't even. She doesn't know how to walk on the ice. You know, like, <laughs> like you, you put on your special shoes with like iron cleats that day. That way you don't slip. The guy yeah. probably just hauled ass and ran away. I was really hoping that the story would end with him slipping over down the road and then someone like robbing car him. Or something. <laughs> it's just like a chain reaction. Yeah. It's like this, the bigger fish eats the smaller fish. Like a bigger yeah. dude keeps robbing over and over. I saw Frozen yet last night, uh -huh. and the entire time I was just thinking, why aren't more people slipping in this castle? Like, you know the entire cast of Matter of Ice? No, I, haven't seen I was just thinking, why wouldn't this movie end first? <laughs> <laughs> have you seen Her yet? Nah. No? Has anyone, have you seen it? Yeah. Is it good? 
I did not like it. You did not like. I it. I did not care for that. Movie. I've heard people who really did like it. Yeah, Everyone so you're the likes first person, it. honestly, that like actively said like not a big fan. The, it won a Golden Globe for screenplay. Yes, I think the writing was the weakest part of that movie. It's a movie that's overwritten, and it's almost like masturbatory. It's like, oh, look how witty and intelligent we are. Oh, we understand this movie, so we're really intelligent and witty too. It's like fuck off. Yeah, there was a, there, there was a Saturday Night Live sketch this weekend. It was uh, it was it was me, which was like Jonah Hill doing a thing. Mm-hmm. It was a her, and like they gave away a huge plot point in the movie. I don't and think I, was it was like, that I haven't huge. seen it. I haven't seen it yet. I'm like, oh well, I know that's gonna happen it, in the movie now. It's not that huge. Okay, that's so. actually uh, one of the things I did like about the movie was that scene. Okay, um, and there's another scene towards the end, which is kind right. of. Spoilery. I still want to see it, so we can, we'll. Talk and I'd about recommend it. watching it. No. Um, I like I Spike Jones so. Like Eternal Sunshine and Spotless Mind was probably that probably one of my favorite was movies. Not Spike Jones. That was Michael Gondry. Shit. Michelle Gondry. Michelle Gondry. Uh, Spike <laughs> Jones did uh, Being John Malkovich. Yeah, he did Being John Malkovich and uh, Sabotage, the Beastie Boys oh, music yeah, video. Oh yeah, that's right. He did all, a lot of music videos for yeah. a long time. And he, he's he was also in Wolf of Wall Street. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. He like he was one of three directors that was actually in Wolf of Wall Street. It was him, Joff of Rowe, and uh, Rob Reiner. Mm. I still have not seen Wolf of Wall Street. It's, it's, good. G- it's fallen into that category of films. Probably with her, it's going to be a film I see on a plane. That's the. That's, that's the like the movie. worst way to watch a movie. Yeah, like I'll, I'll, I reserve watching movies on planes. Like I reserve that for movies I really would never watch any other way. Or that like, you've seen before? No, not even. Oh. I watch like, uh, Live Free or Die Hard. I watch. <laughs> I watch that, that on a plane too. And it was like, yeah, it's probably the best way to watch this movie. I totally saw that in theaters the day it came God. out. <laughs> Although I'm kind of ashamed to admit, I first saw Searching for Sugar Man on a plane. It's because my wife watched it first on the flight, and then she was like, "This is so good, you have to watch it." I was like, "No, no, no!" And then finally, I gave in, and she was right. That movie was. Did that any of you see was really good. Don John? No, no. I, that's a movie I would watch on the plane. Yeah, you see it? Why would you watch that? Because it's a movie I would never watch. I watch a lot of superhero way. movies on planes. So Captain America. I finally on a plane. saw Man of Steel. Oh, you did? What did you think of it? God, that movie sucked. <laughs> <laughs> that movie was awful. I enjoyed it, except the ending is so bad. Don't say anything. I didn't see like, it yet. Yeah. I, well, anyway. the ending's bad without <laughs> Superman saying, well, doesn't there's, die. There's, there's, two, there's two things, like two big things that happen at the end. Well, sort of, like there's one major thing that's just isn't Superman. And then there's another thing where it's like, that's all the collateral damage in that movie. They just ignore The, the only that. thing I could think about the collateral damage. So after I watched it, you know, I watched it with Esther. She said the same thing about the collateral damage. I said, the only reason I could think you would show that much collateral damage is if the next movie is humanity mad at Superman and trying to get retribution for everything that he did in the first movie. Did you not think it looked cool when they were just smashing the place? Yeah, it's cool, but it's like, what the fuck, man? Yeah, do you like, like the bit where letting buildings. them destroy the Earth is only slightly worse than what you did? <laughs> yeah. 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 Do you like the bit where they ran out of stuff to break in the city, so they flew up to space, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> beating up a satellite? <laughs> <laughs> they're beating up like, both sides of the planet, yeah. too. <laughs> like, they're going I like the idea of like they go to space and immediately find a satellite. Like yeah. They're not just everywhere out there. You'd have... If you flew up in space, you'd really have to look for a long time before you found a satellite, right? Yeah, it's like gravity, right? Yeah. yeah. Man. Yeah. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm actually excited for, uh, what, Super, is it Superman versus Batman, or they haven't announced the title for it yet, have they? Uh, no, they have not. You know what I'm Fuck. fucking excited for? What are you fucking excited the for? The Lego movie. Yeah. I saw a preview Will Arnett for it. is Batman. It looked really good. Yeah. It had, like, a really big all-star cast, and it was Chris funny. Chris Pratt is the main character. Yeah. I like Chris Pratt I really want to see it. Also, Guardians, oh, Guardians of the Galaxy yeah. trailer is supposed to be coming out uh, during the Super Bowl. They're having a spot for it. Is that so. a comic book thing? Yeah, it's a comic book movie coming out this year. Who is it? It's uh, well, it's Chris Pratt. It's no, Gilbert. no, the quick comic book people. Uh, Marvel. It's 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 in the no, Marvel I, universe. I have no comic book knowledge. Okay, what superhero specifically? It, well, it's Guardian. It's a group called Guardians of the Galaxy, What's which the is like this really? weird. It's uh. Not, it's it's Rocket Raccoon. Never heard of him. What? Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's a real thing. I'm already out. I'm out, dude. It's awesome. <laughs> it's it's a it's a Who's tiny the... raccoon that's pissed off and like dual wield guns is awesome. What? Oh, so it's like a <laughs> yeah. No, seriously, thing. it's serious. Is it like lame and kitty. No, no, it's it's what? like it's it's supposed to be like really intense. It's oh, really it, intense raccoon. Did you have, Rocket you seen, raccoon. have you seen Thor? Have you seen Thor two? Yeah. Yeah, the, the last scene of Thor 2, the little PS thing that links it into the, the universe, that's part of Guardians of the Galaxy. I don't remember that. The uh, uh Benicio del Toro scene. I don't know if that was, that was after the credits. I didn't. I never. Watched when they came up, they they, they they say, "Hey, hold on to this." He goes, "Okay." He's the collector who's part of that universe, and it all it all ties together. So, Rocket Raccoon is in the same universe as like Tony Stark and Iron Man and like Captain America. It's Suddenly, like, it's, Iron this, Man and all that shit is way less. I mean, no, cool. I'm excited. Like they got Ant Man coming out next year. Wow, Ant really, Man. Yeah, <laughs> they Dude, really got the short end of the stick with the name. Ant Man and Rocket Raccoon. Ant Man's got Michael Douglas and Paul Rudd in it. <laughs> Paul Rudd. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like Paul Rudd? I like Paul it's Rudd. my favorite emotion. <laughs> Paul Rudd's great. Paul Rudd's I, awesome. I, but, <laughs> but I can't get Ant Man. 
No, Ant Man. He, he shrinks down, but he has like the he has the strength of an actual like, a man, but he's tiny, so he can so like eat the shit out of people while he's really small, and then he expands. And, and then so, he's just weak. No, <laughs> he's no <an old> man. <laughs> he doesn't get weak when he's big. Well, you said he can pick up a. a an He's strong like an ant when he's an ant. What? No, so when he's tiny, he still has the strength of a, of a normal sized man. So he's so just he's, annoying. So he, like, like, he could punch like getting you. punched by something you can't see. Yes, but then, like, uh, since you're flying across the he, he gets normal size and he's just a normal dude. Why yeah. would he ever be big then? Well, he goes back and forth. Why? why I don't know. Like I'm, sure, I'm sure it's Edgar you Wright's directing. You confuse yourself I'm sure when you try to explain something. <laughs> Bloody Ant Man. He gets big. Well. <laughs> Bloody Could you make a fist and then turn from like really small to really big? Yeah, he can. And, like, no, the fist can go really fast. He so can. Could, could he put a really small fist on his normal <laughs> size arm and just punch someone into space? Which part of the small makes him strong? It's just he retains it's his normal strength, strength yeah. even though he's small. I don't understand. So why imagine that would be good. if you were as strong as you are now, but you're an inch. So like imagine being like really tiny and you could pick that thing up. Like yeah, but what am I going to do? Punch you in the I know, foot it's really stupid. Hard. I'm <laughs> agreeing with you. I'm just I'll explaining, your I'm explaining the stupid premise. Is it like premise. a stealth thing? So you can like it's, sneak it's, up it's on people? It's a little people? bit of everything. But a it's, little it, but bit he, of everything? He's a scientist. For like, he's, oh. a sci- he's a scientist like like uh, like uh, Tony Stark or um, Bruce Banner are. Bruce Banner is. Where like he's kind of the smart guy and he figures out, figures out how to make this. And actually, um, in the comics, so uh, the, the next Avenger movie is... Uh, Ry- oh, shit, what's, it, what's his name? The, the villain... Uh, it's a robot thing that becomes Ultron. Ultron. So it's, it's the, the rise of Ultron. Is he's that's the next villain for the okay. new Avengers movie? Okay. Spoiler. And in in uh, in the comics, Hank Pym, who's Ant Man, actually creates Ultron, and so he like makes a robot, and uh, he ends up being a bad guy. But this one, so they're trying to incorporate all that into the actual Marvel. So he's universe. a super villain. No, no, he's a he's a good guy. But he made a super villain. Yes, unintentionally. Does, does he have? A higher gravitational pull when he's an ant. Does he <laughs> retain know. the mass? It's a comic book movie. Is he crushes mass down so stuff starts orbiting around? There's him. also a dude who turns to a giant green monster. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a comic book. Yeah, that's book. more believable. That seems more comic bookish versus the dude who gets really small. Yeah. Well, I mean, the, the Hulk is it's like. You should call him Earth. Penis Man. He's flaccid now. <laughs> now he's erect. <laughs> well, no, the Hulk but makes it, sense because he just grows big. It's just like he gets a lot of tumors or something. His blood flow increases. <laughs> All right, here. Let me read. Let me read this thing. What a fucking great segue! Jesus uh, Christ! <laughs> uh, Want to remind everyone that this episode of the Rooster Teeth Podcast is brought to you by Pro Flowers. Forgetting Valentine's Day is just as bad as forgetting her birthday. You just can't do it, and you can't wait until the last minute. Uh, so you can get a hundred blooms of love with a free glass vase for just nineteen ninety nine, or upgrade and add gourmet chocolates and a teddy bear for just nine ninety nine more. Use the code Teeth. Make sure you click on the microphone in the upper right hand corner. Use promo code Teeth. Get 100 gorgeous and colorful blooms, huge bouquet. Uh, Pro flowers are guaranteed to last seven days of your money back. It's a no-brainer. Um, it's, it's, great. it's a great service. I've been using Pro flowers even since before they uh, sponsored us. Uh, I grew up, you know, I talk about a lot in a really small town, and it's the only service that could ever consistently get flowers to my mother um, on time and that actually look good. Sure. Uh, so make sure you go to proflowers.com, click on the microphone in the top right corner, and type promo code TEETH. Order now before Valentine's Day. Get it out of the way. You need to do it anyway. Do it now. Pause. We'll be waiting here for you. Get those blooms of love. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I'm absolutely, Get a hundred of them. I'm absolutely going to use that. I'm absolutely going to use that. Yeah, this it's year. like... It makes it, total sense. Uh, it, it, it's really... I think it's really great for people who listen to this. It's like you have to buy it for your girlfriend, your yeah. mother, I've whatever. I've had some people send me flowers using Pro Flowers. Yeah. It's like, why, why not? Always great condition. Beautiful, it's a, it's a beautiful great flowers. service. Great service. So, so people have been tweeting me. Did you watch? You watched the Grammys last night, right? Unfortunately, yeah, I did. Unfortunately, I fucking hate the Grammys. Yeah, it, was, it was better this year than it has been a lot but of you years. You like you like. I don't have to. You like lame crap. <laughs> That's mean. <laughs> All right, I like. Why is it lame crap? It's like award show because you don't like it makes it lame. No, it's just like a gammy stupid award it's show. Music, dude, gammy? Daft Punk playing <laughs> live. So Daft Punk playing live the for gammy. the first time in six years is lame. That's that's. It's how, how are they Daft play- Punk. Also, how are they playing? They were doing this. They have no. They have. They actually have synthesizers and stuff back. They're there. just doing this, and it's two completely random blokes in the suit. It's not Daft Punk. All right, I'll, I'll, I, f- I found an shit, article. Holy shit, it's Daft Punk! Oh, put on the helmet, Gus. <laughs> All right. I have a feeling the internet's with me on this one. <laughs> do you think no, the I love actual? That punk, but it's like <laughs> do you think the actual two French dudes were in those suits? Yes. No. I think so. Absolutely. I don't think they were. I think so. Absolutely. I, I think so. they I'm were. I'm with you, Jack. Do you anyway. think it was like they, they had costume change part way through? Like at first they were wearing like the all black outfit, then they switched into white. Do you think? Well, they had white for the, the their performance. But yeah, do you think it was like different guys? It's like the first <laughs> guys tagged out. Like, all right, I'm going home. You just your turn to take over. <laughs> you go sit next to Beyonce in the in the row. 
Um, I'm pretty sure Daft Punk haven't been in those suits in over a decade. I bet they have. All right. I, you, you'd think they wear the, the helmets and stuff when they're actually recording the music? They don't. Then why, what's that got to do with it? It's the same guys. It's the same guys from the, mid, the early to mid-90s are still doing it today. I'm saying they still make the music, but they just don't appear as Daft Punk. Why wouldn't they? Why would they? Why would they? It doesn't matter. It's they them. It's their, any their two dudes who match the height description to stand there going... <laughs> 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 they, you don't even see. Like, you don't know what they're doing. They're just doing this? They're, they're playing music. They, they are, they're doing a lot of sampling They probably stuff. can't see shit through those helmets. Maybe they're animatronics. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a fancy Chuck E. Cheese. They're actually robots. We were talking earlier about, because Stevie Wonder was up there, yeah. and how jarring it would be for him to suddenly gain sight in the middle of that performance. Because <laughs> <laughs> he'd be like... Oh my like, god, we're robots! <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> Those robots! How do you no, know anyway, what robots look like? <laughs> don't like so, they, I mean, they, they kicked ass last night, but I mentioned on, on Twitter, is like, if, if Daft Punk plays in the US, I will fly to wherever they're playing and see them. You should have flown to the Grammys. That, that's what the thing. People are like, oh, you should have gone to the Grammys. Like, you can't buy tickets to the Grammys unless Can't-y? you like, know somebody. Sure, you, you could uh, get I'm, to I'm the sure Grammys. If you, I'm sure you could scalp tickets to the Grammys like, hey. somehow. Rooster Teeth had the number one soundtrack with the Ruby soundtrack. <laughs> That's true. I work at Rooster Teeth. We are also the people responsible behind uh, whose dogs are having sex. Yeah, say, so, do you know me? I made sex dogs. Sex dogs. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the, but anyway, but no. Also, with that, it's like that's one song, you know, during the performance. I, if I'm gonna go, I want to see a concert. I, I, I'm gonna fly to see a concert. I will say the bit you showed me from the Grammys was cool. Yeah, I that just, one, there's no way I would watch. And the then whole thing uh, Imagine Dragons and Kendrick Lamar play together. And that was actually a really, really cool performance. But er, like there were there were a few ones. Like Lord did a really good performance. It was really kind of like toned down, and real simple, and it was really, really cool. I heard she had some sweet dance moves. Yeah, she has kind of a weird like gothy emo dance thing going on she's pretty she, she had, like her person. entire fingertips were painted instead of just her nails Interesting. And kind of strange she's stuff very but eclectic very eclectic but then uh then at the very end it was nine inch nails queens of the stone age and dave grohl started playing and it started with a nine inch nails song and then went into a queens of the stone age song and they end the broadcast yeah it was awesome i was like wow what? this is really cool i yeah. love dave grohl he's like yeah, rocking yeah. out on the drums like this is really good and the credits. Yeah, and then it was like, cool. this is brought to you by Delta. And like, like screen taken over they by Delta. They cut the show early? Yeah, they ended it. They probably just There was no, like, no LL they, Cool They were J. like 15 minutes over yeah. time. So they probably figured this is the last music performance. Let's just cut it. But yeah, but they never, wow. like, usually it'd be like, thanks for watching. You know, I've been your host. Have a yeah. good one. Yeah, see like you next just, year. You're Pleasure. already over time. Go the extra two run. minutes. And it's just like, they, wh- I don't sucks. get it. You know, it's like, that I was a really they, cool uh, performance. They get in a lot of trouble by going over there. I'm sure they do, but you're already in trouble. Yeah. It's like you've, you're already 14 minutes over. What's another two? <laughs> yeah. No, it's a good yeah, point. Trent, Trent Reznor was not happy about that. So. I wouldn't be either. Yeah, he was pissed. I, mean, so. I should have arranged for us to go over time and Patrick to cut us <laughs> off yeah. the credits today. Uh, <laughs> you know, we still can do that. But, uh, but like it, it, at one point, um, uh, I completely lost what I was about to say. There was another performance. Uh, did you see Yoko Ono there? Yeah. She's looking weird. Her her son. Yes, now she's looking weird. Now, yeah. <laughs> what happened to her? Her son looks so much like John Lennon. It's creepy. Like, this is the first time I've ever seen her, like, a grown son. Mm-hmm. They look, he, he looks so much like his father. Mm-hmm. It's it's very, very weird. And they had Paul McCartney and Ringo Starr were there. And that was Steven I, Tyler. I, yeah, Steven Tyler Yoko. danced around like Jack Sparrow. I, I, was I was wondering what year it was during the best rock song. Uh, who was nominated? It was like... It was Ozzy Osbourne. Yeah, it was Black Sabbath, Black Sabbath. Rolling Stones. And, and Paul McCartney. Yeah, Paul McCartney. Like, what uh, year is it? It was like, what? <laughs> but uh, was that? Like, there was one other thing that really drove me crazy about the Grammys, and I can't remember what it was. I'll think about it. Again. Yeah, I'll, I'll, let, I'll let you think about it a bit. Pharrell's hat was awesome. The... <laughs> Esther kept saying it looked like Smokey the Bear. She kept saying, only you can prevent four. And he wore a different hat for the, the performance. Yeah. Oh, that's what it was. Okay, so Metallica played one, which is one of my favorite Metallica songs. But for some reason, this was like the Grammys where every, like a piano had to be in every single performance. And so they put like this classical pianist in with Metallica to play one. And it just wasn't pianist. good. Like yeah. it didn't blend very well. And people like, oh, well, you know, I'm like, that just didn't work. And then people like, oh, well, they've done it before with an orchestra. I'm like, yeah, that worked. And they took a lot of time to work on it and mix it down right. This live performance just wasn't good. Did you see that? Sad. Arby's tweeted to Pharrell to give him their hat back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's <laughs> that, awesome. that was really funny. <laughs> that was funny. Uh, I find that I don't even have to watch award shows anymore. I just look at my Twitter feed. And I could see everything that's going on in every. It's reaction. annoying though. It's annoying to hear everyone talk well, about the same thing. Yeah, if you it's don't care about it, it's annoying. It's like, yeah. Oh, yeah. what the fuck? Really? I have to listen to this. Like when Ray live tweets with The Walking Dead, 
Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. shut up, Ray. Um, <laughs> I, I really liked the uh, the set that Daft Punk had during their performance. Mm. It looked like the recording studio. And yeah. Then when they like unveiled themselves and all the lights everywhere. Yeah. That was. I thought that was a really. I will really say, nice I, set. I love that set too. But the live editing of that performance drove me fucking crazy yeah. because like they, you know, the the set was is this really cool. It looked like an old recording studio. Then all of a sudden, when they came out, like lights lit up everything. Like, anything with an edge suddenly got color. Yeah. But they never cut to a wide shot. Like they weren't in a wide shot. Oh, it was when like they super. It? Quick, it'd be yeah, like, and it was just type. like, yeah. Why? How do you not get to the wide shot and show the color and everything hit? Well, I feel like you should be in the wide when that transition exactly. Happens. But the problem was that that's when the screen came down and you could see Daft Punk, so they were in tight for that uh, instead of I being guess. wide for the full do you reveal. Feel like very Tron like. That's definitely one of those things. Like if you yeah. if you're not if you don't do this every day, you wouldn't ever right. notice. Yeah. Like do you feel like working that. in production and, and like with video and all the stuff that we do that now most of that stuff is ruined for oh, us? Absolutely. Yeah, that's how I know that the Daft Punk guys aren't in the suits because it'd be impractical for them to do that all the time yeah sure. that's why after the golden globes i was so amazed they were on the spot when the teleprompter didn't work and like someone was there with the paper back up and just handed it to the presenters yeah. right away yeah i find like i'm noticing so many more things now yeah just well, like knowing the way it works like i mean i took film when i was in college and like you would start watching movies differently you start looking yeah. at editing a lot differently yeah, it's yeah. like oh like these people aren't looking at each other yeah, yeah. Oh. No, it's like continuity errors uh, and you, stuff you, like that. you want me to you want me to ruin every tv show ever for you every sitcom ever for you well no but i know you're going to anyway when, so go for when it. people walk into rooms watch them look down for their mark oh yeah everyone yeah. looks down for their damn mark anytime you walk into a room they're always glanced out and then you see them hit their mark it's like mm -hmm. yep and you'll see that <laughs> all the damn time that's so. okay i was always amazed during live especially chat shows like a show like Loose Women or something or whatever you have here. What? I don't know. Uh, like, but, I'm but, interested in the show. <laughs> bunch of birds talking about stuff. You haven't heard about them talk about Loose Women before? No. Yeah. Well, anyway. It's just like The View. Just okay. watch it and count how many cuts there are, like how many times the camera cuts. And once you realize how many times that's happening, it's like, wow, there's a lot of, a lot of different angles of this. Yeah, how many cameras like, are out in that studio? Yeah. Like on our podcast right now. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's less on this because there's less, less angles. Us. But. <laughs> Well, that's we, like we only have four. We, we've done we've done like local Guys. news and stuff too, which is kind of cool. Like we've uh, you've done morning shows and stuff in Austin before stuff, right? Yeah. Like for RTX, and then you go there and you realize it's like five people, of which four are on camera. Yeah. And it's like yeah. one guy is pushing a button, like the con the camera is controlled by a robot, and it's like moves in, then it like reset, move to a different location. Yeah, I was just, amazed when I went to the local NBC affiliate to do a, a bit on the news there. Like you said, yeah. there's literally one guy who's like doing everything. Yeah. And the, the camera's a robot on wheels. <laughs> what I didn't realize before coming to work for Rusty and being on like immersion and uh, gauntlet set is how many people are involved in a production like that. Yeah. Well, you'd be, sure, you'd be surprised how many people, you know, don't need to be involved in the production. I know, like that. that too. Like so many things can be made with like four people and then, but it's like, oh, we need 60 for this. And it's yeah. like, no, no, you, you really don't. Or like on it's, a professional movie set, just seeing behind the scenes of the crew and it's yeah. 100 Well, we have a room people. full of people over there for this <laughs> this to watch me this drink shit. this beer. Yeah. There is a room full of people over there making it happen. Gus, remember when we were Thank you, Blaine. Thank you, Blaine. I much prefer small crews. Yeah, they're way less, like, as someone who used to work on sets, I used to get really nervous. Like, my stomach would never feel right when there was just so many people around. Yeah. Once did a Super Bowl commercial where we exploded Simon Cowell in reverse, mm -hmm. and there were like, 300 people there. Jesus. And it was, and the shot was just my camera that I was on <laughs> and Simon Cal. And I was like, there's so many people here. <laughs> I remember and that there's commercial. There's so much pressure on. I was waiting for you to it. Was it was before the X Factor. It was for the X Factor. Yeah, I remember. And that, that, 200 that, I, of those people for Simon Cal only. <laughs> he had five hot women with him, which is awesome. But the, and I told the story in the podcast about 295 how. 295 unattractive women. <laughs> how there was one moment where after the shoot, I had all of the footage on my kitchen table because yeah. I was downloading it overnight. And I was like, Man, if my cat like jumps on the table, I've ruined a Super Bowl commercial. <laughs> it was really oh nerve wracking. Because I had the millions only of dollars worth, right? Oh yeah, it would have cost millions to reshoot what we did. Jesus, <sighs> yeah, scary. It's but it, it's cool. I mean, but it is cool to be on sets like that when there are a lot of people. But it's like a well-oiled machine where yeah. everyone has a role. Everyone does exactly like, knows where they need to be, knows what they're supposed to do. Yeah. And then that's when you hear stuff like when Christian Bale is flipping out of the lighting guys because like that one guy fucked up and it's like, well, all right, we have to sit here and listen to this guy scream for a little bit. And you also like learn about really spe specific jobs you didn't know exist. Yeah, like, like the guy who moves the light stands. Like, yeah. There's one guy all does move I've talked stands. before about this guy who I always used to run into on commercials when I used to do beer commercials and his, his job was a beer stylist. <laughs> and he had this little tiny wooden case full of like tiny little brushes and stuff and he would be responsible for like putting condensation on, wow. on beer because under the lights... 
it, it won't look refreshing. Right. Like it'll evaporate. So he was like putting like all this glazing on, and then he's like, like the the old toy repairman in Toy Story Two. Yeah, exactly. He's got like it's the exactly big case like of that. stuff, and is like, yeah, that's how exactly how I picture it. <laughs> I fucking love that scene, by the way, where the that's, guy fixes. It's really toy. cool scene. Yeah, but he, the, the beer stylist was describing to me how he gets stopped every single time he flies because they look through his thing and he has all these like weird little bottles of different <laughs> liquids of different viscosities yeah. and different brush sizes, and, he, and they're like. What is all this? You gonna like build a bomb on the plane? What you? <laughs> no, it's just. No, I'm just gonna decorate some beer. I just decorate beer glasses. So, going back to plane stuff, Gus, I read something really, really interesting that you might find somewhat interesting for your travels if you ever have to check a bag. People are talking about if you ever check a bag, check a gun with your bag, and if you put a gun inside of your bag and like lock it up. They, it will go through a different screening process, and t you can put any lock on it. You don't have to have a TSA lock. You can put in, like a master lock on it if you want, because you have to go and show them you have the gun, put it in, lock it, and like they have to see you lock it. And then when you get to the airport, you collect it, and then you have to unlock it for them. So why would you? So why that? would you do that? What's the benefit? If you well, ever just like, want to travel with, yeah, a if gun. you want to, tra like if you have a lot of expensive stuff, like apparently um, it, can, it can be any form of like any kind of gun. Like you can Nuff actually gun? use a flare gun. Oh. And so like uh, photographers who have like you know thousands and thousands of dollars of equipment, they will put a flare gun in with their cameras and stuff, and then they'll have to go check it, and then they know like that will be protected, and like the TSA that, won't go through. That's a good point. If you have, if you travel with expensive equipment, uh, so, like, I think uh, there was a story a couple years ago. Or uh, a news reporter had his camera stolen. It was like a guy who did like freelance stuff for CNN, and uh, it went through. And like he got his case after the he checked his bag, and like his camera was just gone. Yeah, it was like some baggage handler stole it. Yeah. yeah, I think he ended up breaking the story on it. It was like in New York, wow. some guy in New York had like With what sold camera? hundreds of thousands of dollars worth. Yeah, of stuff. did this story have no pictures? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> just there, audio. There was, there was a thing in Florida where it was like a special report team or whatever. <laughs> they flew through, I think, uh, Orlando or International, and they left an iPad and they intentionally left it at the the scanning area, and they just walked away, and then it just they never got a call for it or anything like that. And they did the find my iPad, and they tracked it to a guy's house. And it was a TSA agent who was working at the scanner place. And he's like, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't have anything. And they hit the find my iPad and they could hear it in the house, like while they were recording. <laughs> and then he, like, he like shut the door and he came back out. He's like, oh, my wife, she bought this off someone. I don't know what happened. Yeah, you I, go I saw yours. that report too. Yeah, so was, fucked like, up. You got, oh yeah, you got so fired. It's so shady. Yeah. So. I, I've, I've had situations where I've flown and I've checked the Phantom. And that's worth like 150 grand. Yeah. But I think if someone opened it, they wouldn't really know what it was. Yeah. Like it doesn't really look like a camera. It just looks, it just like, looks a like a, box, a right? it looks like a weird brick with a fan on the side. So well, it's also it like looks kind of like crazy. the trap from Ghostbusters. Yeah. <laughs> it's got a little handle on it. Yeah. It's also in a crazy like padded case that's. Well, made it's in for a Pelly case. I mean, there's tons of Pelly cases yeah. though. Mm -hmm. On every flight, there's at least one. Yeah. I've been checking my bags a lot more lately when I fly. Yeah? Yeah. It, it always seems easier. Like, it's it's so much less stressful. If, if I need... The only time I'll really do it is if I need, like... I know it sounds stupid. If I need, like, formal wear. Because then, like, yeah. I feel like that adds a lot. Like, having, like, a suit jacket and, like, a change of shoes and stuff. But if I can just wear, like, this, like, my shitty tennis shoes and this, like, 99% of the time, I could live for, like, three weeks out of my little yeah. rollerboard. I've like, come I, to the point where I prefer checking my bag now just because... You give it to them and you're done with it for the yeah. rest of the day. You don't have to like put it up there and carry it through the aisle and take it down at the end. And so you check a bag it. instead of carry on. Yeah. What do you do on the plane? I have well, I have like a purse. Oh. But yeah. even then, like when I travel, like it's usually Katie and I travel together now. So we'll just get one bag and put all of our stuff in it. And this is a lot easier. Just check and it. One time, I uh, I had to do that. I had to check a bag. Uh, my wife and I shared one. We went down to uh, New Zealand. That's why we had to check it. We were going to be gone overseas for a few weeks. Came back. And uh, I had bought a brand new bag for Esther specifically for this. It was this giant red bag with this weird pattern in it. I was like, unmistakable. We're going to be able to see that for sure. We finally come back. We land in Austin. And we're waiting by the baggage claim. And our bag's just not coming. I don't know where it is. And I look off to the side. And there's like the bags that they pulled off to the side. And I see a bag that looks just like ours. Like with the red crazy design on it. Except it's smaller. And I'm like, whoever owns that bag took our bag thinking they grabbed theirs. Yep. <laughs> so I went and I grabbed it and I took it back to my apartment and sure enough, a little later that day I got a call like, hey, I grabbed your bag by mistake. I was like, let me guess, yours looks the same but it's smaller? Like, yeah, I was like, I've got your bag. <laughs> <laughs> so you held it a ransom. Yeah, I was like, come, come and bring me my bag. Huh, that's and, funny. Uh, yeah, they came, they came by. That happened uh, similar to me. You know at uh, the, like, the smaller planes where they make you check your hand luggage like at the gate? So yeah, they yeah, they're too full. Because it's like tiny little <laughs> overhead compartments. I left my bag there and I saw the exact same carry-on luggage that I had like that belonged to some other guy 
And I was like, I have to make sure I get off this plane really fast because I'm sure my bag's going to come out before this guy and he's going to just take it thinking that it's his. Sure enough, I get off the plane and I see him rolling my bag away. And I'm like, dude, wait. He's like, are you sure that's your bag? And he like checks it. He's like, oh, no, wait, this isn't mine. And I'm like, yeah, that's mine. This wow, is yours. You got it. I like was running off of the run <laughs> of the fucking jetway there, and I caught him just in time. So but we need. So what we're saying bags, is, guys. we need to make Rooster Teeth and Achievement Hunter bag tags, like luggage tags, or luggage bags, yeah. or yeah, just luggage. Just throw a big dick on yours. <laughs> yeah. Big throbber. Yeah, I've started attaching like little colored like ribbons or something to mine now. To when where was it? I was going on a flight. I had to check a bag somewhat recently. I think it might have been when I went to PAX Australia. Um, I didn't have a name tag for the bag I was going to check. So uh, I grabbed one and I started filling it out. And the woman at the counter was like, you're going, you're from Austin, right? And I was like, yeah. She goes, you're going to visit Australia and come back? I said, yeah. She goes, don't put your address on that. I said, why? She goes, because people who work here, they'll see you're going, they'll see the bag tag that you're going to Australia and they'll see your address here in Austin and they'll know you're not going to be home for several days at least. Jesus. I was like, oh, that makes total sense. She was like, yeah, just put your email address and your phone number on it and nothing else. That's awesome. I was like, that is really fucking smart. I'm going to rip my address off mine. I guess, no, she didn't even say phone number because that would have an Austin area code. I guess she just said, just put your email address on it. Well, how are they going to find your house from your number? But they'd know you're from here. I guess, yeah, you're right. Yeah, they they won't find your actual house, yeah. (laughs) They'll just start dialing your number a lot. You're like, (laughs) hear the phone ringing. (laughs) I never put my address on yeah, those then, tags. Yeah, and then she said you can put your address when you come back. Do yeah. you, you have any big travel plans for this year, Gus? No, I'm going to Vegas next week. Oh, yeah? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, Are you going to Super Bowl it. weekend? To no, I'm, I'm going to get there right <laughs> after I, I Super got, Bowl. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, hey. <laughs> Full <No>. circle. <laughs> just like life. Um, yeah, what what are you doing there. in Vegas? Just, just for fun? Or? Um, no, I got some work stuff to you, do there. Oh, okay. <laughs> you don't want to say who you're going with? Uh, no, no, I'll tell that story later. You should say who you're going. No, no, I'll tell the story later. Trust okay. me. Uh, I want stories to back it up. Okay. It'll it, it, it's gonna be interesting. I'm so clueless as to yeah, what's so going on. Like at the end of the when show? I come back, like after the trip. Oh, okay. All right. Do you yeah. think um, goosebumps for blind people is just like reading a bunch of jumbled letters? <laughs> I have goosebumps right now. Just Why do like, you have goosebumps? It looks like Braille. It's I don't know. Maybe because he's wearing dick? shorts and it's thirty degrees. Yeah, I, I, it's a laundry day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wearing shorts. I don't understand. I've got, I've got my like my ankle socks on right now. So yeah, Ooh, there you what go. Whatever band on your thumb. People are asking on Twitter. Oh yeah. So um, I we had an Australia Day party because Australia Day was this Sunday, and so we threw one on Saturday here. Australia. Because you're yeah, the worst American day. in the world now. Sorry. You're the worst American ever. I'm the worst American. Are ever. Are you gonna start saying how you going? Yeah. How you? How's it going? How you, uh, going? how you going? How you going? Excuse me. <laughs> you fuck, you fuck I that fucked up. it up. I fucked it up. I say Melbourne going? though. Anyway, uh, so we had Australia Day party, which good was day. awesome. Good day. And uh, <laughs> and I, I, afterwards, like after everyone, everyone left, I was cleaning up stuff, and we had we had made a bunch of like Australian food, and uh, we had a paring knife, which the paring knife like curves in, mm-hmm. and so you you know I usually I clean my knives off, and so I was like running my thumbs along the back of it. Oh god! And the paring knife is like reverse of what you think it is, and so I just naturally and just ran my thumb down the <sighs> bladed end of the knife. And immediately, like, shook him, like, threw it down, like, I was angry at it, like, ah, what the fuck is that? And then, like, I, you know, sealed it up. It, it's it, not really a deep cut or anything like that, but it's enough to, uh, enough to warrant, like, sealing it and then putting Neosporin in. Wait, why are you cleaning up. knives with your thumb? But, like, you clean the back of it. With what? Just, like, he's probably just knocking I mean, all yeah, the, all like the not, built like, up like, crud like, on you know, it. Or, like, sticking it in the dishwasher? Yeah. No, yeah. no, no. Well, these are good knives. You have to, like, hand dry. Do you have a sponge or anything? Yeah, but so? I, I prefer to wash with my hands too. I feel like, yeah. as, as weird as it sounds, I feel like the sponge collects dirtiness. Yeah. The sponge is the dirtiest object right. in your house. Yeah. But you can yeah. feel when it's clean. Like if it's, you know, you run, I run like dish, you know, dish soap over it and stuff you like that. So you feel if it's, it's still it's... greasy or not. Yeah, exactly. I That's what I do. I can't touch And so, anyway, the, the knife, instead of like every knife, which is like, you know, kind of curves down. Diva. This one reverses, <laughs> it, so. It makes my hands feel weird. It's like. So I bleh. managed to cut my own thumb because I'm an idiot. Anyway. <laughs> have, you okay ever, have you ever cut yourself with a knife? Yeah. I tra- I uh, I closed the Leatherman over the ed- edge of my finger. Ow. Yeah. Just nicked it. Bled a lot, though. <laughs> How about you? Uh, yeah. Actually, recently, I was cutting up apples to make an uh, apple pie filling. and uh, How the- domestic. I know, right? <laughs> Ding. And the person I was uh, making this with was just like, don't cut yourself. And I was like, don't worry. The second I said that, I just went, zoop, right on my thumb. Oh. <laughs> it just cut, like, right there. Uh, that's funny. not bad. No. When, uh, when I was a kid, um, 
<clears throat> and you would get like a gallon of milk. The thing that sealed the cap was different than it is now. It's like now you can like just peel it off and it comes off. Back then it was like this solid plastic ring. And I guess if you were an adult, you could just like twist it off. It was like a breaking the seal, but I was a little kid, so I couldn't. So anytime I had a brand new thing of milk, I had to go get a knife and cut it oh, off. Oh no. So one time I put my hand here to secure the gallon of milk and I put the knife into the ring and I cut it and the tip of the knife went right there into like <laughs> in, the in between in the flesh and it went like into my hand. And I was like, <laughs> I pulled it out and like threw the knife, like you said, you throw yeah, the knife you... down and I felt like a coppery sting oh. throughout my entire hand. And I felt like it just radiated up my arm. And it was just like, just a tiny little slice right there, but the knife had gone in. It hurt so yeah. fucking bad. I once, uh, I once lent on a stapler that was open. It was like flat open and I just, I went to get up and I put it, <laughs> I put my palm on it and it just went stapled in. And all I could see was the line. One of the And I just couldn't get it out. I was like, ah, it, it hadn't like curled in, right. but it was like, I just, the, just hurt. the pressure, I just couldn't pull it out. One of the dumbest things I ever did. When I was eight years old, I was seven or eight, I think I was eight, I had a stapler in my hand and I thought, I wonder what paper feels like when you staple it. So I put my thumb in the stapler and stapled it. It's fucking dumbass. I know, and I was like, and as Logic. soon as I did it, I thought, paper can't feel anything. Paper doesn't have like, feel it. <laughs> and I was like, like, like you said, you have it in there, and I pulled it out, and it's just like these two little dots yeah. of blood. They just like bead up. It's like, oh. It was so dumb. The worst, the worst idea Ugh. in the world to me is a paper cut in the webbing of your finger. Uh yeah. There, I don't they think there's that that Dude, they didn't, like, I think Jackass huh. too. I also, like, right here. That's oh, like yeah. That's the one yeah. bit Jackass I can't watch. Yeah, that, they do that, each, that's, like, like they've the, done, the they mouth. do all kinds of stupid shit, but that yeah. was, like, the one, like, nope, nope, nope I'm out. Like, I literally, <laughs> like, turned turn my head away. Yeah, I'm like, you could get punched in the face, you could break yeah. your foot. You Second, can, you give a paper cut on the webbing of your finger, I'm out. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. I'm done. They poo volcanoes, but I don't care about that. But yeah, <laughs> you, you cut the webbing, dude. They're making it. They're making a uh, Jackass Four. They're, they're making a Jackass Four. Really? Like, yeah. How, is it large format? I don't know what it is. Because that was my guess. We talked about this a couple weeks ago. I said if they make another Jackass, the only way they can go now is like IMAX. I'm saying that. That, <laughs> that being said, someone on Twitter okay. linked me to an image of uh, it was like a Jackass Four thing. I don't know if it's legit uh, or not, but I think it is. You want to check so IMDb? I'll I'll check IMDb for you since you like going to IMDb so much. <laughs> he did it. <laughs> so uh, we should probably talk about RTX. Nah, RTX this summer, July fourth, fifth, and sixth. Yep. Uh, we're really gonna go a lot bigger. So uh, tickets go on sale this Friday, mm -hmm. and if you want to exhibit, you can contact us at exhibitor at rtxevent.com. And if you are exhibit, you can also contact us. If you are us. exhibit, yes. you can contact us. That joke is so fucking old. Yep. If you want to build giant Lego statues, just let me know and I'll stay well away from Gavin, you. Gavin, <laughs> last year was your first RTX. Yes, it was. What do you think of it? Loved it. Yeah. To be yeah, even so bigger. It's good. It was good. Bigger and better. It was the most surreal weekend of all time for my life. Yeah. So we're going to do it this year again. There's going to be more Achievement Hunter stuff, more Ruby stuff, more everything. So. We're actually going to have less of Achievement Hunter stuff this year. We're going to reduce it. Shut we, up. We have too much. We need to <laughs> pare it down. You guys just won't be there. I'm just yeah. kidding. That was a joke. <laughs> no, we'll do, all be do, there. Don't we'll worry, do live ladies. Let's Plays. I always get worried about this live Let's Plays. I had a blast doing Let's Plays. We That's fun to do. It's just, play. It's feel, it feels like it's just chaos. Like, Can I, people already see what is going on? Yeah, I don't think well, they care. That's the thing. Really? Is you guys are up there doing this well, live. Because up yeah, there, I mean, all it feels like is just yelling and well, they have chaos. someone. They have someone live yeah, cutting we during the show. We had the screen behind you. Yeah. So yeah, it's like showing everything and then cutting. Does it have the names on it? I I don't know, but I don't I'm think sure it started with out. it. But I think it did. Like, I think if we do, it, we I, I will say my, my favorite thing we did the one of the Let's Plays. I forget if I forget if it was Assassin's Creed or something else. And at one point, like <clears> one of, like we started singing, <throat> and then all of a sudden, two thousand people started singing along with us, and it's like <laughs> that's pretty fucking cool. Like that's one thing that doesn't happen in a room full of six guys. You know, yeah. that's that's pretty neat. Did so. you guys play a certain simulator for a bunch of people? That actually was the first thing I did at RTX. That, that's it, that opened RTX. Doors open. Yeah. And, uh, Friday, right? The idea was that Michael and I would go up and try and get people to play Surgeon Simulator with us. So they, <laughs> the doors opened and they told us just to go up there, even though it was before we were meant to be doing it. They're just like, try and gather a crowd. We went up there for two minutes and it was so full that all the seats were taken and it went into other people's exhibit areas. So it was like, well, I guess we should start then. <laughs> yeah. It was ridiculous. It might have been the most fun I had at RTX. It was so much fun. It was like yeah. the very first thing I did. Yeah, just the, doing surgery on up on stage live with Michael. Yeah. It was yeah. a really weirdly cool experience. I will say this year for Achievement Hunter is going to be a little different. Like last year we tried doing it where all six of us were in one like spot together. Yeah, and that's we just can't do that again. Things are going to be much more so organized in terms worst of Worst ideas in my life. Stapling my thumb. Putting all the Achievement Hunter people together in yeah. one place. Yeah. 
That, we that thought was it would it be was, like cool, like having like all in one shot. It, it, worked, it, worked it, made, out, a, it made a terrible line. Yeah, it worked it out great really, for a few people, but not everyone. There, it just there'd be times where one of us wasn't there. Yeah, someone would be a panel, panel or something, or whatever. and then they'd have to go in again. And yeah, you have to wait. Six, like people were waiting in that line for like six to seven hours. Yeah, we can't like, do that. We don't that's want anyone awful. to do that. And that's too much. The great thing about planning RTX is that you get to learn from your mistakes and make it better each year. But I got a few complaints from people. It's like you were never at the thing. Like like people's parents and stuff is like. Well, yeah, but I was, you know, I was up at five doing this giant balloon fight in the street, and then I went straight from that to the podcast panel. Then I had a slow mo panel. It's like I, I, I couldn't be there the whole. You time. You were literally yeah. there every minute possible. I was there every minute, apart from like twenty minutes where I just sat in the, the special area, yeah. Yeah. the secret area where I could just sit down for a second yeah, and, dr- and dry off from Hopefully the. Hopefully, yeah. it's going to be balloons. organized this year where you could see everybody you want to see. To some extent. Yeah. yeah. Well, we'll probably do like pairs of Achievement Hunter where it'll be like, you know, if you want to see me and Ryan come at no. the time. I got, I got no. some ideas. Whatever. No pairs. Oh, no? Got to break everyone up. Okay. All right. That's that's um, your call. So, it's funny. I don't know like how much we talk about like behind the scenes stuff like during the event. Mm-hmm. But launching 2013 was one of the worst, most stressful experiences of my life. Because before the doors even opened, we already had to have the paramedics on site. Mm-hmm. What happened? Someone dislocated their knee. In, waiting in line, right? <laughs> Which is apparently a thing you can do. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, it's a ball joint, isn't it? Because uh-huh. so, someone was like jumping up in line or something? I never got the full story for how the I knee was someone, dislocated. I heard someone like jumped for some reason and they landed on it weird. And <laughs> Who would jump? I mean, like, I don't know why they were there jumping. Was, there was a dislocated knee and a fractured ankle. And I was like, we're still five minutes till <laughs> yeah, doors open. We have already had to, like two medical emergencies. Yeah, this is a fucking bad omen. Yeah. Well, I guess if we're gonna do anything like that, being downtown in Austin is a good place to, you know, no, I mean, dislocate your knee. And we, you know, as part of planning, you have to have, you know, so many yeah. paramedics. I'm you sure, have to have so many. Yeah. L- I'm sure they have paramedics on them in like a minute. You know, so yeah. it's like if you're gonna do it, that's the place to do it. You know, it's like luckily there's breakdowns for it. It's like you have to have this many paramedics. You have to have this many armed police officers. You have to have this many unarmed security guards. Like. Yep. A menu of things you have to have there for and organizational purposes. And our amazing guardians, who are the most awesome people in the world, and those applications are open now. Closing so, Friday. Nice. Yes, they close on Friday, which is also the same day tickets start. I just got a reminder on my iPad. What's that? About tickets? Reminder. You're my bestest friend, Gus. <laughs> Blaine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's sweet. Set that up for you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the reminder, Blaine. I really appreciate it. Yeah. So, do you still have the the Tower Pimps? The Tower Pimps is in our warehouse. Yeah, so it, it might come back. It was I, pretty. It's pretty bad. It was I awesome. Like it. I think we should keep that thing. It's yeah. a good photo. Op. We should. Um, yeah. We should do something with it, the new building. Yeah. Uh, I guess it'll be. Yeah, we'll have the height for it. So yeah. we could do that. Well, I mean, we should probably we probably should maybe move it from RTX 2014 to the new building, so that way right. we don't like move it to the new building and then over there. That's, yeah. back that's a good plan. And, yeah. So, Maybe uh, repaint it. It might be a bit gammy at that point. I don't know. Well, it, dep- it, it was fine. In, it was my garage for like six months. You said gammy twice on this podcast. It's, it's like a good a, word. <laughs> it's a new record. But uh, someone had a gammy knee at RTX. Yeah. What can we do? Like, I mean, that was like, what can we do for like the achievement hunter area? Because we'll have we'll still have an achievement hunter area no, to some won't. extent. What? We we're not. Yeah, you will. No, you won't. <laughs> of course. Well, just without autographs. Why don't you add your numbers? Why don't you open okay. it up to suggestions? I thought you meant. Yeah, well, yeah. Like I, think we should, uh, I think we should have the logo on the ground and then the Minecraft Achievement City. I that it. was actually the plan this yeah. last year. Yeah, I mean, we were going to do Achievement Jack City. Jack got me year. like the the images for the houses yeah. and we had those as backdrops. Yeah, so I'm we, talking about like a full scale. Reproduction. No, that was that was in the works for a yeah, little that was, bit. That almost Jeff's happened. Jeff's house might oh. be a little hard. Too. Jeff's house would not have to. Go. No, we were talking about draping always. Jeff's house, where it was like you know similar like that plastic that fabric we yeah. use for the, the backdrops, but it would just go all the way to the ceiling. <laughs> we, so we make like a big a big square. Out we of that. had also talked about making it go up a certain way, and then just having like faux clouds around it <laughs> to yeah. make it look like it disappeared <laughs> into the clouds, going. which That'd is accurate be cool. because the clouds do go through the top of Jeff's right. house. Right. Mm-hmm. Actually, it's not even the top anymore. It goes through like yeah the lower third of Jeff's house. It's very possible. I think it's doable. We're actually. Um, we've had a lot of comments recently saying that Jeff's house is the cause of the lag. Our last few Minecraft Let's Plays have been pretty yeah, been a nightmare. And uh, we're, people are wondering whether just the extra height <laughs> of Jeff's house is causing lag on the world. But I don't think that's what it is. No. We found out recently that Ryan was on Wi-Fi for the last yeah. three Let's Plays. Oh, Jesus. So uh, he was the one who was screwing us. So hopefully now that he's back on wild. wild Wired. Wired. Hey, remember that bet be where uh, I, I bet Gavin that his Xbox would break before mine would? Yeah. So his Xbox is breaking. No, it isn't breaking. Yes, it is. What happened? Not, you said break, though. That's yeah, like Yeah, no, out. I'm saying it's Basically, breaking. It's, it's working happens. its way there. When we purchase a game and download it, everyone's download finishes before mine. No, not download. You're talking about installs. You I was put, downloading FIFA. No, no, you were installing something the other day, and you were like at no, 3% no. and sometimes everyone else was when, finished. Sometimes when you put a disc in, before it installs, it will say there's an update. 
and that's the bit that it. But everyone like. did the exact same thing, and you were yeah, like my download later is later than everyone else. The install is fine. I don't know. I, I'm, also, still th- I'm still thinking your Xbox having a is PS4 breaking. on top of my Xbox won't slow down the download. I sure. Well, I'm not. It'll, it'll slow down. No, the install. It's like crushing off the, the bits. Disc. Only time will tell. <laughs> Man, I for the first time ever, I finally bought a full retail game on my Xbox One. Really? Uh, via digital. It was nice. Was it? What'd you get? I bought gigs? Assassin's Creed Four. It's a great and, game. And uh, it was awesome. It's like I tell it to start downloading. Like I, it was in the morning. I got up, got in the shower, took my shower, came out, and it was like ready to play. It's like sweet. Yep. It's awesome. Some games they're, they're ready to start before it's finished installing. Is it works like you can play the full game, and sometimes it just puts you in a menu where you have to wait. Yeah, this what one, the hell is the point in doing it? Yeah, this one just... took me to the menu, uh, and it said single player was ready to play, and the multiplayer said like installing and had mm. like a percentage on it. I'm also having an issue with my Xbox at home where if I put in Call of Duty Ghosts, it will hit the title screen and then go black, and oh. if I restart <laughs> the game, it won't happen. The only way to fix it apparently is to unplug your Xbox and then plug it in again. That's weird. You play Peggle Two a lot, right? I play yeah. I play Peggle 2. Is is Peggle 2 like blown up too big? Like it, it spills out of the frame for you? Like no. when like the play button or like where it says play, it's like cutting off on the bottom of the frame. Oh, no, like it they sounds didn't like a title safe yeah. or something? Yeah, it sounds like, it's like not you've, title uh, safe. you've messed up. You don't need title safe. Why don't you check your television? Yes, you do. Yeah, you, you absolutely do. Why? Yeah, you need title safe. I've, I've HD seen, is always the same resolution. Let me answer you. No, ask me the question. I'm in the process of answering the fucking question. So I've seen things where we deliver video to YouTube, right? Like take, for example, the Amazon, the drone short. And I'll watch that on my TV. This is an HD delivery to YouTube. I'll watch it on my TV, and the text is cut out. Yeah. Well, I can see it all fine in the window on my computer, but if I watch it on my TV, it's cut. Yeah. Well, that TV means your like TV actual... is not pixel for pixel HD. A- yeah, actual, actual TV is cropped the edges of the frame. Yeah. They're, because they have to have, like, bits, bits are cropped out by the bezel because they have to have bits. Or bits. I'm saying bits a lot. <laughs> they have to have hardware to hold the screen in place. Yeah, it's not, it's not a flat. Like, when we were capture windows, that's your full frame. But when you're actually watching it on an actual, uh, like an actual television, that's <laughs> actual. Yeah, yeah, if you actual, compare actual, your actual, capture actual window television. to your TV that's sitting there, you'll see this. My difference. TV at home is identical. No way. It is. I, I've got it to a mode where it's just one for one. It's like every pixel is every pixel. There's no, like, you don't lose anything. Watch the, uh, the Amazon short on your TV and see I will. if it cuts anything. I will do a comparison. Take, Here, so, let, okay. me, let, me, let me read or this thing. Play some Peggle 2 take a photo of like one of the screens because it cuts it off. Well, you got to remember as well that a lot of games when you start, there, okay. there is no, there's no option to fix it. Sorry. Okay. You, you go ahead and you say when you start the game. You yeah, it, it just says, like, put it to the edge of where your and screen Peggle is. And Peggle, there isn't. There's not one of those. I looked for it. And all that does is move the HUD, usually. But yeah, I think Barbara wants me to read this. No, I was going to say, did you see uh, Meg 64's uh, Dead Rising 3 video? Yes. yes. So very, funny. Very Genius. funny. Um, I also saw their Papers, Please skit, yeah. which people are tweeting at me nonstop. I feel bad because I sent it to you over IM today, and I'm like, Gus has to see this. And then I'm like... <laughs> I bet everyone is tweeting this at Gus. Yeah, right I've got Matt the only one who so talks many <laughs> times. So, Papers, Please is some indie game? Yeah. yeah I I'll tell anything. you about it. Let me all read right. this first, and then I'll tell you all about it. You're Papers excited. Uh, I want to remind everyone, this episode of the Rooster Teeth Podcast is brought to you by Sherry's Berries. Yes. I so say you were probably <gasps> making me read this. You probably wanted me to read Whip this. Them out. Pass these out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. snap. Here, you start eating those while I do this. Yes, sir. Uh, Sherry's Berries. You get giant freshly dipped strawberries from <laughs> Sherry's Berries start, <laughs> starting at $19.99. That's over 40% savings. Or double the berries for just ten dollars more. Just use code Teeth when you order. Uh, what? Did you bring napkins? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I, I brought wipe. I brought these uh, these wipes. Here. Wipes. Um, you get them dipped in white milk, dark chocolate, uh, topped with chocolate chips, decorative swizzles or nuts. I like the white chocolate with the swizzles. Those are my favorite personally. Uh, get enormous, romantic, fresh, juicy mouse mouse mouth watering mouse watering uh, strawberries. Um, so if you want to get this amazing Valentine's Day deal, get giant freshly dipped strawberries starting at just $19.99 or double the berries for just $10 more. Visit berries.com. That's B-E-R-R-I-E-S.com. Click on the microphone in the top right corner and type teeth. It's very important with both pro flowers and berries, I should have enforced this more, that you click on the microphone in the top right corner to get the deal. <laughs> yes. Um, oh, Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I had a meeting with them recently and they said that our listeners are the worst at clicking the microphone in the top right, right corner don't make us look they bad guys for some reason they said that the code still works if you don't click on the microphone but like the special deal for even more money off you don't see that unless you click on the microphone in the top right corner so they said they honor all of your codes you're just not saving as much money as you should be you're spending more money than you need to oh my god so go to berries.com click on the microphone in the this top is not right helping corner them. <laughs> and type teeth that's b-e-r-r-i-e-s.com here give me that oh did you all eat all the white chocolate ones no there's Maybe. one more okay 
I know it's the best one. No, they're real good. Yeah, these are right? really, Is this really the first time good. you've had it? Yeah. Yeah, it's really good. Mm. Strawberries are awesome. I got the bow this time. Gavin got it last time I got yeah, it. Yeah, you've been eating a lot of fruit so recently. They, I had a fruit salad today. It was delicious. These, this fruit, this strawberries are always so sweet. It's amazing. Give me one of those. They're like sticky. You got to be careful. They're very, very juicy as well. Yeah, I got one without a lot of chips on it because I don't want them spilling all over me. Um, so, yeah, papers, please. It's um, Is it's it an it? indie game. It's it's my pick for game of the year. Uh, it's an indie game where... Are you guys using their makeup wipes? Makeup remover for your hands? Oh, is it? Yeah. <laughs> I thought you were... Mm -hmm. <laughs> I told you it's makeup remover. It's alcohol, right? Good enough. No, um, no. <laughs> you play a passport control officer at a fictional <laughs> Eastern European country during the Cold War, <laughs> and you have to either... Well, I know why it's your game of the you year. You inspect <laughs> people's documents, and you either allow them or deny them access to the country. So you, you like sit in like a glass booth and like yes, you, you have you see the line. The people walk up and you have a desk. It's basically like desk management. Like where do you put all the papers? <laughs> you What's are your the workflow biggest nerd I know for comparing them. Wow, it's only. amazing. It's I like so it good. now because you used to play flight simulator on planes. You can now play Papers, Please. You should yeah. do that while you're walking. If through only they before. had a mobile version you could yeah. play on your phone. That'd be amazing. I'd be like, or like waiting I, at the papers? border. Yeah, <laughs> when I, when I <laughs> let myself into this place. It's Good really, Lord, really yes. fun. It's so like, how accurate was the Meg 64 skit? Uh, it's pretty spot on. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. The music um, was cool. The, the music is, the, like, that's the music from the game. Do you okay. know anything about the game Spy Party? Like, other yeah, than it's I been, love Spy Party. It's been, it's been a PAX the, like, the last 10 years, and is it is it still not out yet? Like, uh, I'm looking, it's in beta. I think you can download it. Really? I think you can. It's like an early access mode. I, well, I saw it at PAX one time, and I got to play it, and it was a lot of fun. Yeah, they've been... I, I know the PAX you're talking about. They've undergone uh, an art style change since oh, okay. then. They've updated the graphics quite a bit. Uh, it's really, really fun. Sweet. <clears throat> so, Bernie's texting me. Bernie's not here tonight because he's traveling. Uh, apparently, he's in an he's airport. He's not going to Vegas, is he? No. He's on his way back to <laughs> I Austin. I hope not. But apparently, he's in an airport right now. And he texted, he just had a funny encounter with a podcast watcher at the airport. He said he just started watching the podcast two weeks ago. He doesn't know any of our names. He just recognized him as the guy who sits on the right. <laughs> wow. We're going to throw him off. <laughs> like, what's up? Really funny. Hey. So does he watch it on YouTube, I guess? I guess so. That's funny. Why on YouTube? I don't know. I just assume that well, he's probably if, not a sponsor. If he's a new watcher, yeah, he's probably not a sponsor. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's funny. We, like, you, you, yeah. like You talk about something and you get a lot of tweets during a live stream. And then a week later, it's like, why the fuck? Is oh, that's right. It went public to yeah, non-sponsors yeah. today. That's right. So we had to start adding uh, a title card. When we upload the the podcast to YouTube, saying this podcast was originally recorded on like, okay. this date, especially if we're talking about something really outdated, so people understand that there's a week delay, yeah. and it also reminds them that you can watch a newer version if you come to our website. Yeah, we have a lot of cool shit coming out for sponsors this year. Yes. Like we, I've been talking with Adam about we're, we're working on some new website stuff. We've we've talked about that, right? New website that? stuff. I, I don't the, think we could give specifics oh, yet. Want to give a shout out? That guy, his name is Christian. Hey, Christian. Christian. We never What's give shout-outs, so there you go, Christian. So we got some, some really cool Achievement Hunter stuff. Uh, I sat down with Adam and Caleb and Ray, of all people, talking about new website stuff. Ray, of all people. Well, he, he just happened to be in the room. We started talking about, like, oh. well, what do we want for the Achievement Crazy Hunter Crazy Ray. Ray. <laughs> it's like, Z. all right. <laughs> yeah. What do you think, like, who's going to be updating the website? You don't, I don't know if I think Ray. Like, all right. But yeah. uh, out of all of us, he's the most gamer person, I guess. So we're, we're talking about leaderboards and competitions and things, so. Yeah. We got some cool ideas. There's going to be some new website features. There's going to be some new benefits that we haven't talked about yet for sponsors. So everybody watching now, yay! If you come to RTX, and we'll tell you about it. Well, hopefully. We'll probably we'll tell you well before then. By then. But <laughs> yeah, by RTX it should be. Should but we be can, we can talk to you in person about it, I guess. Yeah. No, you should come anyway. Yeah. We have, the, we have a lot of the convention center to fill. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be really empty if you don't come. <laughs> it's going to be Dude, sad. I'm excited for RTX this year. Yeah, we, we have grown quite a bit of space. It's yeah. even... Much bigger. Is, is the stage yeah. this year you're going to be bigger? The uh, the gaming stage? Or <laughs> we'll be... see. Man. I think. Okay. I feel like that stage is already pretty big. It's a good you size. I think bigger? we just need more like audience seats. Well, I think I think this year since we're not having like achievement hunters always doing signing and stuff, we'll probably do more let's play type stuff. We'll be like more opportunities to see us do stuff live. At least there are also <laughs> some I'd like people to. People on the stage at some point. Sorry. There's other people on the stage at other points too. Yeah, but who cares about not them? Not just you guys. <laughs> I feel like uh, we we've also learned like there were other <laughs> things I wish we had done differently, like the. Um, the screen at center stage mm -hmm. was a 32 by 9 aspect ratio. It's basically yeah. two giant 16 by 9 displays. And as a result, none of the video that was displayed there can really be shown anywhere else. Yeah. Because it's like super extra wide, super letterboxed. So it's like we have to have 
a 16 by 9 display or two different 16 two by 9 separated feeds them. so yeah. that we can grab video off of them. It's like one of those things you don't think about until after the fact. I wonder if we should capture our le live Let's Plays. We were we were going to try like, to. Like, record just, them, like, and then release them as Let's Plays. It just wasn't practical when we were there, because it was like we were so busy, and it was kind of like we had to walk up there and then start going. Because it, it it's kind of like the podcast, the, the podcast panel actually becomes the podcast that right. week, right? Yeah. yeah. I wonder if we, we could it, probably we, just do that. It was uploaded, but just raw. Like yeah, we, ca we captured the footage, yeah. but it's just... Yeah. A fan actually, a, a fan re-edited the Assassin's Creed Let's Play into like single screen, traditional style Let's Play. Oh, really? really? Yeah, they actually took the footage and recut oh, it. Oh, yeah, Jesus. I did see that. Yeah. Must have been a lot of work. That's nuts. <laughs> People well, would do that kind of stuff. What was your favorite part of RTX? I don't. I mean, going the Achievement Hunter panel was a lot of fun. Like getting X Ray and Vab out there. That was that was one of my ideas that I came up with a long time ago. Yeah. And I'm like, I wonder if we can pull this off. Because I told you That's about. That's why it. I'm really happy you're an Achievement Hunter because you're the only one who's kind of proactive in that way. Yeah. Like, a lot of us will talk about doing things. That it's like. Yeah, we'll never do that. Yeah. You're like, all right, let's do this. I'm gonna, we're going to get these costumes. It'll be awesome. I no, like that. Jack yeah, that is definitely the most responsible out of all yeah. the Achievement Hunter. <laughs> someone, someone has to wrangle the cats at Achievement Hunter. Whenever I need something from Achievement Hunter, I'm just like, hey, Jack. Yeah. <laughs> well, that, that, yeah. And so, someone's got to be that guy. So I, I yeah. fall into that role. I'm not the loud screaming ones or anything like that. So. Well, the last Let's Play showed that. Jesus Christ, man. That was like that was polar opposites of that Let's Play. We, we did this Let's Play when Jeff was out. And it was Michael and Gavin screaming the entire time. And me sitting there. And I, I just quietly won the damn thing. <laughs> just like, what? <laughs> In silence, at least like mention things you're doing. <laughs> well, you, no, you guys were talking so much. Right, well, this, this and it's like, went. do you do you ever expect me to try to out yell Michael? It's just not gonna happen. <laughs> I'm like not even gonna try that. So but you're like, just like, right. yeah, well, mm, yeah, I'm pretty much wrapped up over here. Yeah, I'm about to win. I have one. <laughs> Brilliant. <win. laughs> I know we're like we were talking a lot, but yeah, those let's plays are so heavily edited that I pretty much just cut out all the silence. Yeah, yeah. So there'd be things where like Michael and I'd be talking, and then there'd be silence, and it'd be like, no one's saying anything. Hey, let's talk again, and it'd be like that. So we'd it ends up just seeming like yeah, we were guess, talking the whole I guess, time. I guess the thing about Minecraft Let's Plays, there's a lot more focus in those, and yeah. I too, I get quiet when I'm thinking, like really trying to focus on what I'm doing. But that's probably why I won because I'm actually focusing, yeah. trying to accomplish something. Whereas you know the stuff where it's like you know you're out of it, you're like okay, I'll just goof around from yeah. this point on. That one, but, that one ended up editing together like we were talking for an hour straight. So really, it was <laughs> but like those. I probably cut like fifty percent from those Let's Plays yeah. usually. Uh, I think. A lot of people say they, they want to see an unedited Minecraft Let's Play. You but don't. It would no, you be, don't. No. It would be two hours of just like a lot of pauses. And yeah. It would be the same thing as an edited version, just with silences in between, right? Yeah. Pretty much. And it's basically and a, lot, the, a lot of bleeps. It's or basically you, you, you the highlights. Skipping around looking for action. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, the way it, it comes out, it's, it's like the highlights without seeming like there's bits missing. Yeah. Like I cut a lot of stuff out, but you would never know where I cut them. Mm -hmm. I think that's the best way to do it. Do you remember yeah. quick bits? I remember that, yeah. That was a lot of effort to make. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's like the Let's Play stuff, it's funny now too because we've got a lot more editors now. We actually have like full-time editors. Like Lindsay's doing full-time editing. Caden's doing full-time editing. And that gives us an opportunity to actually kind of play a lot more games. But then you find if you play, if we do like two or three Let's Plays a day, you get burned out. Like trying to be funny and talk that much in, a, in one day is actually difficult. I don't yeah. know how you guys do like a full day. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the the bow broke around his ears. I was trying to convince him silently to put it as like a bow tie. <laughs> ah, it was a trap. <laughs> Where did the bow go? It went but, over there. Oh. It's tricky. It's like you know, it's like oh, poor us, and they can't play video games all day. It's like no, we're we're trying to be funny, and then if you do, but the problem is if you do something like four let's plays in a row, and then you're trying to be funny on like the fifth one, it's just it's like <laughs> pulling teeth basically. It's almost so. worth it to just not do it. Yeah, it's kind of like all right, we we need we're to also recharge. quite lucky in that in um, we don't really have to try and be funny a lot of the time, like. The games we play, ooh, pardon me, <laughs> like uh, GTA, funny stuff yeah, just, happens. just happens. And I, I'm always deliberately reckless. Like, I won't try and do anything stupid on purpose, but I'll, like, take a stupid vehicle. Or, like, if everyone's going by car, I'll try and take a plane. The and I'm so bad at flying. The chemistry, I think, like, that you guys have yeah. is what makes the videos. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, that's the thing. It's like that, that, the six people, I think, is, like, the sweet number where we have all these different personalities and everyone, like, you can find someone to relate to. And that group of people, mm -hmm. you know, so it's like some people relate to the gents a little bit more because they're a little bit older, and some relate to the lads a little bit more because they're younger. And they, yeah. who you do know, you relate to, Jack? I relate to the gents. Like, <laughs> like my, my goal in You're every like let's play plus. Well, like my my goal in every let's play is to get Jeff to laugh. If I can get Jeff to laugh at something I said, then I'm good. Even yeah. if no one else gets it, or understands <laughs> it. If I make him laugh at something, like okay, I, I did, I'm, we, I'm happy with we, this. You one. and I had a uh, a moment like that before the podcast yeah. <laughs> started. With our Dave's not here. Yeah, Dave's not here, man. No, nobody this got it. Just you and, me. and I was asking you a question, and you replied, "Dave's not here, man," or whatever. <laughs> yeah, like, you cracked up, and Jack cracked up. I was like, 
Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. What is one of those things? It's like, you know, those little 5% jokes, but if someone gets it, it's like, ah, I know that. Or you throw out a community yeah. reference that no Ray, one else Ray, watches Ray is show, really though. good at sneaking references in that none yeah. of us notice, and then all the comments are about his one yeah. reference. It's like, yeah. What? Yeah, that? Ray will throw in, like, like Star Bomb and all that stuff, and all these, like, game grumps and things that, like, I just don't get a chance to watch, but he knows he knows all of that stuff. I don't know how he has time for that. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's non-stop he playing nothing video games. nothing at home. Yeah. That is also a good point. <laughs> yeah. So He went outside this weekend. He what? Went? Yeah. He went to pinballs this weekend. With Whoa. Who? Some, like, I think friends that he has in Austin. That is bull. But I saw pictures and video of him. Oh, like, yeah, he tweeted about pinballs. At, like, Man. outside of his apartment. I'm just like, oh, my God. Wow. It's that's, like seeing an elephant. That's, in, like, like, even more rare than me going outside. Yeah, I was saying the fact that Gus is surprised by that. <laughs> Gus never goes out. Yeah. When are we, when are we going go-karting, Gus? We should. We had an, you had an opportunity to join us, and you turned it down. That was fun. Did we ever talk about that? Did we? Like, fully on the podcast? We talked about the first time we went. We went again, though. Yeah, we're, we're setting some stuff up with these guys now. We're going to hopefully film some stuff there, but... The fact that Gavin came in second place when we went go-karting... I got fucked. ...blows my mind because Gavin doesn't drive. But and that doesn't so, mean I'm crap at driving. That well, just means I, I don't drive I feel in like there's public. some correlation just knowing, like, how to judge when to turn, just, like, everything well, like that. Well, you can tell. It's, like, it's science, really, isn't it? It's, like, I think also you play a lot of video games, so it helps. I wish we had a close-up of that. What? <laughs> it's science, really. Well, it is. You know that if you take a really... Sharp turn, you're probably going to lose momentum. Well, it's, it's all about hearing. If you hear your tires skidding, you know yeah. you're not getting traction. You're not being efficient. On exactly. The road. So you're not getting as much energy. Not getting that. I was know. just surprised. I was surprised he was that. Good. Well, and also I'm sure you're surprised because I got I got boned, and so that's why Gavin took second because I would have been in the top ten or the top ten, top three at least. You were in the top ten, Jack. <laughs> I've never seen you so mad. I was so pissed off. I've gotten I've gotten screwed over the last two times we've gone because what, what what we do is you know you do See, a this qualifier. Is how, this is how we're so different. If I was screwed, I'd probably be annoyed and then be like, ah. Done. This oh, to you, you're still was, annoyed. This has been going on for weeks. No, so what happened was we do like because we did, we did like a practice race and then you do a qualifier and the qualifier you're just trying to beat your own time and so I actually won the qualifier the fastest time out of everyone and they line you up like F1 style and we go and we had two missed starts where like one time someone in the back their engine didn't start and then the second time my engine didn't start and the third time we finally went and we're going and I'm supposed to be in the lead and Joel just burns past me and then people start just passing me like crazy. I'm like, what the hell? Then I realize I'm going slower. I'm not at full speed. And so I went three laps around the whole thing and I finally like waved to the guy working there and pointed to my car and it's all, it's all indoor electronics. So he looked at this little box and hit a button and my car started going full speed. So after ev literally every person had passed me, I then got a full speed car and I made it, I passed half the people on the course to try to get back <laughs> For up the front. For the last three weeks. I was so I like, mad. I, like that, like, I was so <laughs> mad. Oh, I didn't come the, at the first The funniest place. thing though is that he had a GoPro on the front of his thing like we we're testing out GoPros. Oh. <laughs> and he was just there like, <laughs> and everyone's like, <laughs> Yeah, you see him blowing past like, me. And then, like, the point where you can see me where I flag <laughs> down the guy, and I point, and you can, you can literally hear the engine, like, rev up. And it's like, god damn it. So, it's that visual proof. They had, like, the little kid mode on or something. I, I, well, because they, they have, they have like, a, like, a really slow mode, and then kind of a medium, and then a fast mode. And for some reason, I was just in that weird medium mode. And I, I, I don't I know what happened. I was embarrassed at how sore I was after go-karting. Yeah. Well, if you, yeah, you get thrown around. My arms, things. I didn't realize... Since it's like obviously not power steering, you have to use so much upper body strength to turn that car. Yeah. And like I have really weak hands and arms and everything, so my entire body was just like uh, by the third race. I'm like, ow. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we we so we, we went last time and did a bunch of GoPro tests. So I did like GoPro facing forward, then facing the 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 shot of me where you could see me and the, see the people behind me it was actually a really cool shot. Yeah. But we're gonna have to work on it because it's super super shaky. So if we can find a way <laughs> to stabilize that. By the end of it, the that. GoPro is looking at the yeah. Scene. <laughs> yeah it, it actually shook backwards where it was looking straight up. I lost the GoPro. This oh, weekend. Yeah. <laughs> I can't. I probably can't talk about the video because it hasn't come no. out yet. But yeah. you'll see it soon on the slow mo guys. What happened? Destroyed or lost? Destroyed. It doesn't exist um, anymore. <laughs> if you had to guess who did it, who would you guess? Oh, someone actively did it. It was Bernie. When was the last time you saw Bernie in a slow-mo guys video? Oh, I thought I didn't realize it was oh, slow-mo. Yeah, yeah. So uh, Dan, Dan, Dan did it. We uh, <laughs> we went over to the wreckage, and I tried to. I was like, "Well, it's not the end of the world, you know. We'll pull the SD card out of the wreckage and see if we can." Get... Hmm? Nope. Nothing. I found <laughs> the plastic of the SD card like bent backwards like this, and the other half like this. But all like the date, all the pins, the metal pins were just missing. It's like oh. it, it blew the data out of my SD card. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. When we did the uh, the immersion with the zombie headshot, we shot a couple of cameras like that with like shotguns. Yeah. And it's like you can see in the f we were able to salvage the footage. You can see like where the pellets come and hit the 
yeah. the lands. You're like, oh, hopefully we get the cards out. <laughs> Luckily, we were able to get the cards out of all of them. Dude, that's that, awesome. When we did the, the GoPro test, that was the first time I really messed with GoPros myself. Those things are fucking awesome. The new ones man. are cool. The old ones are kind of you yeah. can't really see. Because I, I had it, I had it set up where I had my phone out and I could actually see what the GoPro was broadcasting <laughs> on my phone, and then I could start recording from. And you my also phone. change the settings. Yeah, yeah, you like, can change yeah, everything up, and it's just like you know super what you should easy. use next time we go go karting. What's that? Google Glass. I I should use Google. Oh, you have that. Why do you use that? Yeah, well, the thing, well, because they're not prescription yet. So like Google Glass, I have it, but I don't. They don't have the prescription lenses. They're still working to get the the manufacturer for the actual prescription lens. Right. Well, as soon as I get that, I will absolutely get the lens, and then we can go from Might there. Be unless, more entertaining. unless do we do we have a sponsor that will do uh, Google Glass <laughs> lenses for do me? We have a sponsor that will do Google Glass. <laughs> <laughs> Any so, takers? Anyway, but yeah, uh, but the, yeah, I've been messing around with Google Glass a little bit more. It's, yeah, it's I think go karting might be more entertaining than watching you try to get Emma to roll over for five minutes. <sighs> But the, but she's it, so cute. She's so it cute. It was like I, 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 I typed up so many mean tweets to you <laughs> in response to that video, and I stopped all of them. I was like, I was a little drunk. I'm like, these are probably over the top. I'm like, no, no, I'll just make fun of him later. Aww. Yeah, that's. Uh, I, I I taught Katie how to how to write out a really mean tweet and erase it. Like that's like the most. It's just like it's almost as good as posting. It's like <laughs> oh, and just select all. I think I do that more than I actually make tweets. Yeah, it's good. It's good. Let's get out of your system. Did you hear Gus's story about how he left? Your dome light on in your car. And yeah, <laughs> I did not turn the light on for the record. I just did not alert him to the fact the true. light was so, true. So when was this? This was last week. It was like two weeks ago. What was it? When was it, Gaff? Yeah, it was two weeks ago. What two time did you notice it at? Well, we forgot to tell it. It might be three weeks ago because we forgot to tell it in one podcast. Yeah, maybe maybe three weeks ago. Huh. Uh, it was it was after work. It was like five. We were leaving. I was giving Gavin a ride home. Okay. I'm trying to think who would. It's when Jeff was dead. Dome light on. Gus was giving it. A light right home. So it was like the, it was the light. No, it wasn't. The, it was it a mirror the, light. It was the, the mirror, like when you flip down the the shade on the passenger side, yeah. and you open you know, the mirror up, and the lights turn on. It was that. That's maybe weird. Katie. I guess maybe yeah. Maybe Katie was with me. Yeah, or Katie something. was in the office at the time. Yeah, she was probably there then. So, oh well, they, those things. Women, am I right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like Gavin had pulled his phone out and was going to text you. I was like, no, no. I'll, yeah, I appreciate don't. that you, you would have let my battery just <laughs> die. It would have been funny. <sighs> no. <laughs> dead batteries are not. Dead batteries are not fun. That would be you. Do we have security camera? Life. Do we have a security camera pointing that in that direction? Yeah, that would have been fun. Yeah, yeah. We, we would have. I, was, we would I have really was going to text you. I said, just so you know. And then Gus was like, "It will be content." <laughs> and I was like, "Okay." <laughs> no, that, my battery died on me on during extra life. Like, well, like I went to go get food for everyone, and I, was, I spent like three hours dealing with my car. <laughs> yeah, we got cold chicken nuggets. Yeah, I got, I got like I think fifty or hundred chicken nuggets. They were all cold by the time I finally got them here. But they were so fucking good. Oh, they were so tasty. Was that after I was drunk? I don't know. Probably. That, that, was, that was probably yeah. about eight o'clock. Cause I, 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 that was I came up and you guys were doing the um, the mud pie, or not uh, the mud pie, the uh, the the lava cakes, yeah. or whatever. No, because I, I brought up Emma. That's what it is. I brought up Emma, and then she started freaking out. So I took her home, and then I came back, and you were doing lava cakes. I, th- I think, or, or I, I, I don't I was, know. It's somewhere somewhere in there. It all worked out. I arrived just after lava cakes. Yeah, I was actually watching lava cakes on my phone in the cab. <laughs> That was the like fastest the I've ever gotten drunk. <laughs> yeah, extra life. Actually, nice? extra life has already begun for this year. Like you can actually start donating this year if you want. Um, really? I, need, I need to set up the team for us. But um, yeah, this year is going to be even bigger and better. We're going to have the new studio too. Mm-hmm. So we yeah, we're through. formalizing uh, what we're going to be doing for not only extra life but some other charities throughout the year. Yeah. So we have a couple of uh, mm-hmm. events we'll be doing throughout the year. Yeah. We should go for a million. God, uh, I'll shoot. I'll shoot for half a million. Yeah, five hundred as the next mm-hmm. step. Like that's nah. our goal, and then but that's like, a huge goal. That's, that's a, a that's huge a step huge up goal. already. That, I mean, the the largest donation, single team donation they had had before us was like a hundred and ten thousand, I think, and then we donated like three hundred and sixty thousand. Yeah. So we crushed that, and then but there were like two or three other teams beneath us that also donated massive amounts we, of money. But it's you guys, you guys crushed yeah, it. Yeah, everyone in the audience. So thank you. Are you a little tipsy? No. Why I'm you're kind of no, no. You're kind of glassy eyed. Your that's eyes just are the like, way I look. <laughs> Like yes. you're, you're like, <laughs> that's I a, that's, see the reflection. That was a drunk your response. Eyes. That's just the way I look. Look at her. Look at you her don't eyes. know who I am. No, Ossifer, I don't need a look beer. Look at her eyes. They're like watery and glazed over. I've seen you drunk. You're not. No, get, you're not drunk. No, I'm not drunk. I know okay. drunk Barbara. It's I kind am of not like, beer bridge drunkleman quite yet. Beer bro. <laughs> beer bridge that's probably probably the strawberry that did it to you. Yeah. <laughs> the strawberry <laughs> that knocked My you eyes out. get glassy when I have sweets. So good. It's weird. All right. Well, it's about time to wrap up. Is it? Yeah. Are so. you, uh, Gus? What are you gonna do if it snows tonight? What if it? If you wake up oh tomorrow God, morning, come into work. Shut the fuck up. If you wake up and it's eight a.m. and there's three inches of snow, so the guy who doesn't in die. front of your house. <laughs> I'll come to work unless there's ice. Really? Yeah. Damn. My one time, uh, the what was it? It was the the December of I want to say oh nine. It snowed here a bit, uh, and uh, it was like maybe an inch. I remember inch that. And and we're at the, uh, the Congress office, right? Right, mm-hmm. and 
I was in. You and I were actually both in San Francisco at the time. We were working on a commercial spot. Okay. Uh, out in uh, at Two K Marin. Shores, yeah. Oh, Two K. Okay. And uh, my wife was walking Benjamin, who was uh, still really young at the time. Benjamin was like nine months old at the time. She walked him outside. She has video of this of him walking out in the snow for the first time. And she makes a little snowball and says, hey, Benjamin. He turns around and she throws the snowball right in his face. <laughs> and he gets the most confused look on his face. And she's just laughing maniacally at oh, him. King Benjamin the dog. There's something about animals being in ice and snow is just adorable. Like, we let Emma run around the backyard and she hit an ice patch and just ate shit. And I was like, ha, ha, ha. Just laughing Jake. at this poor dog doesn't know what the hell's going on. It's funny to me watching a dog walk on ice since they have four legs. It's like they'll be walking and like one leg just like shoots out. And they're like, nope, they're fine. They got the other three. Yeah. They have double the chance of slipping that. Than we do. Or half the chance. But they have double the chance of avoiding it? They have twice the recovery, but double the chance. Right. Three times the fun. Four, four, <laughs> four times <laughs> the fun. We've entered the math portion of the podcast. Math. All right. We have to film Minecraft tomorrow, so make sure you come in, Jack. Okay. All I'll, right. I'll, I'll be in at some point. We're out. I'll wait till the snow goes away. All right. Bye. bye. I love you. Bye, ah. Internet. Bye. You know what? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's all about good. I've got more than four and a pin full of bites a minute. Tell them, get free. Tell them.